good people of Defend the House and welcome back to another top 10 of the year. This is the fifth time we've done this, I think. Yeah, 2013 20 was the first one. 13. So. Jesus, so this, this is the fifth one. Five yeah. years. Wow. Half a decade we've oh, been doing God. <laughs> these videos. But it's fun. It's a fun annual occasion. Uh, if you are new and you've never listened or watched one of these uh, top 10 lists, me and Jameson have a list each. So a possibility of 20 games, mm -hmm. although pretty unlikely, but who knows? It could be a crazy wild year. We are going to go through uh, each of our lists at the same time. So I'm going to start with 10, then Jameson will do his 10, then I'll do my 9 until we get to number 1. Right. And uh, just some bonus information, we do not know each other's lists. Mm -hmm. It's a kept secret for fun reveals and shocking twists. So <laughs> I obviously... We can kind of guess where stuff is going to be for each other because we reviewed a lot of games over the years, but we just, so over this year, but we don't know. We don't know where things are going to be or if games will be on the list at all, uh, which is the fun of it. God, the excitement and drama that could come. So exciting. Oh, plot um, twists. What was I going to say? I don't even remember. Oh yeah, this I, I think this year might have the least overlap. I don't know. I, I'm, I'll be very curious because hmm. last year we had like, five games that were on both of our lists i think something like that at least four okay and we had no i think we had even more than that i think we had like six games we had ratchet uncharted doom inside and the witness mm -hmm. that's at least five okay so or and stardew six my god and there was even overlap there were like three games that all lined up in the same spots last year i don't think that's gonna yeah. happen this year i no. maybe one or two might line up i don't know i don't even know if we're gonna Ooh. have more than one game on on both of our lists i don't know what I... exciting things may come i would assume mm. that we have three games on the on each other's lists that match not in place but just overall interesting we, we'll see yeah we shall see maybe and maybe uh not. despite the title of the video saying best games of 2017 there, this is not an objective list of best games. It's our favorite games. Yes, which games we enjoyed the most. Sometimes those don't line up. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, like looking at my list now, I know that there are games that I put higher up that are worse than games that are below it. But I personally have enjoyed the games above it more. So it's very, very personal. Yeah, and uh, Do you, you don't need to... Um yell at us if a game isn't on the list um instead you could put your own list in the comments and yeah. tell us why we're wrong which <laughs> is what i like that's the way i would do it if i was commenting on a video <laughs> yeah uh yeah i think that's about it it probably won't be three hours long like last year because yeah could we reviewed a lot of these games uh, yeah thro throughout the year we've been a bit more consistent with our long talky videos like the only purpose years. really that the review roundup served like it was basically created to <laughs> reduce the length of this video <laughs> yes and it should accomplish that hopefully god wanna, i hope so do you want to comment quickly on your overall opinions on the year in gaming sure yeah it was um, 2017 it was a really good year uh, mm -hmm. as for games. And I think that if you were the type of person that enjoyed, like really liked all of the really major, super highly reviewed games this year, then I bet it was probably one of, or maybe the best year in a long, long time. Uh, yeah. You know, cause that's probably like six or eight games that are all like just incredibly well reviewed. And if you liked all those, then wow. Um, I didn't like a lot of those, um, but I would, st and I would, <laughs> the last month has kind of, or even the last two months has kind of been a bit of a bummer in a lot of ways for, for games, I think. November was rough. Yeah, I would say even October to an extent, it was sort of a little hit or miss, um, and that mm -hmm. sort of like soured me on the whole year, but then looking back and realizing, oh, right, like there are actually a lot of really good games this year, and I initially thought I would have a hard time filling in 10 games but as i came down to it i sort of realized it's like oh no there are actually like more than 10 games that i would happily have put in the last few spots on my list yeah i agree um, i think i liked last year more because me too last year's games are just more my my type of thing but uh this year the diversity uh in the types of games 
the mm-hmm. sizes of games, you know, where they're coming from. It was like a really good year for representing just like I think games as a whole, where it's like this is yeah. Japanese games were on fire, the indies were on fire, like in a good way, you know, and the AAA was a little all over the place, but did hit in some pretty cool ways. And it was a uh, good year, lots of diversity, lots of things to play. Um, but I liked last year more. Uh, but yeah. yeah. It was, it was solid. The, it, was, uh, it was good. The, the, the one thing I was going to comment on, you already mentioned, I, I think I have a very, very diverse list this year. Yeah. A lot of genres. Some AAA, some indie, some p- from genres that I don't usually touch. It's been an interesting year, and I've tried some things that usually I would skip, and I ended up liking. But I, I think overall you summed it up pretty well. I think 2016 for me was stronger, but this has been an interesting year. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of self discoveries of what I like and what I don't like. Yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> there were definitely a few things where I thought I would really like them, and didn't, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, uh, I wish it had ended as strongly as it had began. <laughs> that would have been nice, but also <laughs> difficult because January and February were pretty stacked. Were Even March, like the first quarter of the year, was yeah. crazy. So that's okay. It was good. There were a few real bummers, but this video is all about positivity. All positivity. No mentions of any foul, evil games in this list. No no shitting on games in the top ten. It's nothing but compliments. We'll see how long mm-hmm. that lasts. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we shall see. Because, you know, no game's perfect. And even some stuff on my list has some problems. Yeah. But we shall get to that. So I'm going to start. I'm starting this year. So my number 10 of 2017, this was the hardest choice to make in the whole list because (laughs) there were so many games I could have switched out for number 10, but it just scraped on. My number 10 for 2017 is Cuphead. Hmm, good. Which is surprising. Is it? Because Cuphead was starting to become this game where I wasn't sure if it was ever going to come out, (laughs) and I had some worries about it when it was getting shown off because... Uh, all, all the boss stuff looked very cool. Yeah. The design was amazing for all that stuff. But they, they started to show off this run and gun type level format. And I was like, ooh, that looks bad. That mm-hmm. looks rushed. Like they were just trying to fill in uh, like a section of the game for people who didn't just want to fight bosses all the time. And I think they were good levels, actually. Uh, I, I haven't even explained what Cuphead is. But at this point, I'm assuming well, you that reviewed everyone it knows. As well. Yeah, we did review it. Yeah. But um, Cuphead overall is a, a really strong package. I ended up liking all of the run and gun levels. I think the one they showed off was the first run and gun level, and I think it's the weakest. It's kind of a shit show, that first mm. level of stuff just kind of raiding from the sky. And then afterwards, all the other run and gun levels have, like, themes and unique ideas in them. So it's kind of weird that the first one you encounter and the one they showed off is maybe one of the weakest uh, levels in the whole game and thankfully those those they, they comprise a pretty small part of the game as well like there were only yeah. what six six or seven something like that like mm-hmm. they were pretty light and which was good i was worried that it was going to be like 50 percent platforming 50 percent bosses but it was very much not that it was still a boss rush game at its heart which was good yeah yeah um, as we as we go through this list um there's going to be a lot of games that we have reviewed and if you would like Uh, A deeper look at our opinions on those games. We will put them all in the description below. Right. And we've reviewed a lot of them. So if you're like new to the channel, like podcast type videos, there's going to be a bunch of stuff down in the description for you guys. Um, Cuphead's kind of a simple game. So it's it's quite easy to summarize. I think the game looks incredible. I think that almost goes without saying. One thing I actually did after playing Cuphead is actually just watch Cuphead. Ah. Because I noticed that I was so... I was concentrating so hard on what is happening around me (laughs) because Cuphead is a difficult game that I didn't always take in a lot of the subtle aesthetics and drawn details that they had put into the game. So I went and watched some like Twitch streams of people because it's fun to watch as well because people struggle and they rage and that's always entertaining to watch. And I ended up appreciating the game more when I was actually watching it than Mm. playing it. It's a damn good game and I think they're crazy. For attempting to draw a video game by hand, I think yeah. it's mental, yeah. and I understand why it took so long. But they did a great job. 
And I think there's a lot of, um, a lot of bosses for a game which is created like this. I think I would have given up after four and been like, ah, the game's two hours long. Uh, people will still buy it and like it. But they, they went a long way and there's a lot of bosses in this game. Game, I think when I reviewed it, I was only at the second island. Mm. And Something like that, yeah. You definitely hadn't finished it. And I didn't realize how much stuff was on the third island. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's half the game, almost. And I think in the review I said that I hadn't got frustrated much. <laughs> that did change on the, on the third island. Um, but I think, overall, the difficulty was really well balanced across all the encounters. I found two bosses frustrating. Uh, for anyone who's played the game, it was the Bumblebee Lady. I found her to be a... Actually, it was the worst for me. I was so angry at that lady. And I also found the robot man. It's like a scientist inside a oh, robot's yeah, head. Yeah. I just wasn't very good at the plane stuff. I don't know if it's because I haven't played many... I don't know what to call the genre where you're flying around zapping stuff in a plane. It's a classic genre. and I'm just, I haven't played much of it. I'm not very good at that type of gameplay. So I found those bosses pretty difficult. But overall, not too much stress for me. I really enjoyed... 95% of the game. I really liked the last push of the game. The dice boss was <laughs> amazing. Part, yeah, yeah. I really liked the design of the devil as well. Overall, just had a really good time and I'm quite surprised they pulled it off and it wasn't a bit of a disaster. Yeah. Yeah, Cuphead ain't my cup of tea. Ooh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, but it's... Um... It's like an amazingly well-made game. That was probably the most <laughs> surprising part. It's like, yeah, obviously it looks incredible, but like, oh, they made a really tight, well-made, challenging game with like a vision that's just like, no, no, this game is hard. Uh, sorry, yeah. it's not for you. And uh, I mm -hmm. think that's awesome. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it showed up. I think it would have been, <laughs> I think that would have been a little bit of a bummer if it didn't. Oh, it, almost, it almost fell off the list, well, which would have been... Would have been sad. Yeah, I, I think so. It's. I will never. I mean, I played all that game, but I used a god mode because I just wanted to look at it. <laughs> and I, I will never yeah. ever be able to play that game normally and enjoy yeah, it. That's fair. But uh, yeah, it it's, was. Um, it, it was also one of those games which is fun to play alongside other people that are playing. Oh, it. I bet. Yeah. Uh, that's always been one of the funnest parts of playing stuff from from software. It's very fun picking up a Bloodborne and a Dark Souls and playing it with someone before guides are out and you're right. passing information back and forth and you're seeing which boss other people are struggling with and which bosses you find difficult in comparison and that was very similar with Cuphead. It was fun talking to people and being like, I don't understand why you're finding this boss difficult and then they say the same thing back to you and you're like, how the hell did you get through this <laughs> boss? And it's kind of interesting how different people struggle with different aspects. Yeah. So it was uh, that was one uh, another fun aspect of playing Cuphead this year. Fantastic. Number 10 in the bag. Done. Well, everyone's going to hate me for a little while, but I don't care. Because <laughs> I also hate myself. Because number 10 is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Ah, okay. Okay. Oh. Interesting. I, I really wasn't sure if it was going to make your list at all. I think it's me completely too. fair. Me <laughs> too. I think I, I agree with this. This is this is fair. This is very similar to my Pokemon Go entry last year. Yeah, yeah. Where it's yeah. like sometimes the, the game isn't perfect, but you've got to acknowledge the fun you have of it. Yes, yes. And yeah, upon some reflection and also playing it again, you know, in the last few days on the test servers after not touching it for several months, actually, um, mm -hmm. I was reminded that, you know, yes, the game is a horrible mess. And sometimes... It's amazing how much, like the me way it's the ways in which it is messy are sometimes just delightful. We yeah. had a crazy, some crazy bugs in our last session that were hilarious and very entertaining. And yes, it has had. I've had some dark times with it. Um, I think they had, <laughs> you know, some real problems with damage and and latency and all that. But um, I I realized it would have been wrong of me to deny the fact that I have had many many amazing times with the game and mm -hmm. um, it is it's a it's I feel like it's the most new and refreshing multiplayer game I've played in years like 
Hmm. Obviously, something like Overwatch I love a lot more and is objectively better in every conceivable way. Um, but it's like Overwatch is, is Team Fortress 3, you know, it, it's not a <gasps> particularly sh- like it's not like a surprising, you know, original game design. And technically, this isn't either, but uh, I had never played any Battle Royale games before. And this one, I feel like just gets it just right all in all the ways for me uh i i have no interest in playing and for a lot of people yes obviously yeah and um that the i only ever play it with other people with not randoms either only with friends solo no thank you it's terrible um god it sucks but two three four people uh i love the loop of 20 minutes of cooperative looting and environmental exploration and traversal uh you just sort of kick back and relax and loot and then drive and or run around and explore and get better guns and you know joke with the people you're playing with and uh harass each other and then the last 10 minutes are like a hyper intense you know ultra team focused uh exchange and fight and it's uh it's an incredible variation in terms of like what you just like emotions and comfort you know this mixture of co-op and competitive uh it's it's uh it's very very unique and exciting and you know every time they put out patch notes it was like instantly clicking and reading it and i i yeah i definitely realized in the last week having played the test servers that it would have been wrong to not have it on my list because it it is my most played game of the year by a substantial margin and mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to stop playing it anytime soon now that the test server like the 1.0 is coming out a week from now and uh, you know I would have it would have been nice to have tried 1.0 before doing this list but it doesn't really matter to me you know it's it's a Jameson is early access you can't put it on the list <laughs> I paid money for it and played 200 hours of it before it was 1.0 so it doesn't really mean anything to me um, mm-hmm. and I had many many wonderful times and the lows yeah. the lows are exceptionally low but the highs are so much higher than any other multiplayer game I would say I've ever I've played uh, you know with some exceptions maybe and um yeah, it's uh, a heck of a game in a lot of ways. and I, I've really enjoyed PUBG just from a spectator point of view. Right. I've really enjoyed seeing its success, seeing the direction it goes in. I've really enjoyed uh, watching the Twitch community take it on and seeing how those guys interact. It's been a fun thing to spectate. We've talked about it extensively in our Patreon podcast yeah. about what we like about it and what we don't like. For anyone who hasn't listened to the Patreon podcast, um, I don't play it. I don't play much of it. Uh, I, I really respect the game and have also had fun with it. But I just find it almost a, a waste of time. I, I think that I don't, I don't know how to put it correctly. Just almost disrespectful to your free time <laughs> in occasions. Uh, I'm trying to be less dramatic about it, but basically I just don't think it's an efficient use of my time. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. I just always know that I could be spending my time elsewhere on games that I would enjoy more more and have more frequent fun, more guaranteed fun. Yeah. Um, I am hopeful for the future of PUBG because uh, we've had some good times in it and I would really like a smaller game mode uh, varied game modes, custom servers. I would like to see PUBG be flexible. If PUBG became um, a game that was like able to be modded, gave most people the ability to just rent their own servers, it would be incredible. Mm-hmm. Like whenever I listen to people talking about the old days of Armor and DayZ, they always talk about modded servers. I don't think anyone really played the standard game. It was all about going on servers, which had different rules and customizations and mixing up the experience. And I think PUBG is so, so perfect for that. And it's so ready. And even him, uh, PUBG, sorry, player unknown, Brendan Green himself, has said that he wants the game to be moddable. And he's hoping that the next player unknown comes from messing around and modding PUBG. So I, I don't know when that's coming. I know it's in his vision, 
Uh, so hopefully in 2018 that becomes a reality because I would love to play some strange and interesting game modes. Like yeah. I would love to play um, in instant kill from the blue zone with times <clears throat> four speed just to see what it's like. I would <laughs> love to have the flexibility, but yeah. I don't like um, if I have a feeling for PUBG that I have to jump in and play 40 minutes. I, I have to find people to play with because as you said, solo is shit. And sometimes you just you just die and you have to watch other people play for 20 minutes so I could just be doing something better with my time. But um, it's been very fascinating this year and I am very excited for its future. I really want mods. Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's also definitely 2017's game. Like no <laughs> game has consumed and taken up 2017 more than Battlegrounds. I mean, it came out in yeah. March and it's still you know, breaking consecutive player numbers and sales numbers like every week, basically. Uh, it's it's, yeah. uh, it's a phenomenon for a reason. Uh, and to deny that fact is to be uh, crazy. Like, you know, yeah. So that's number 10. And uh, boy, there are some other games that are way better than Battlegrounds as a whole package mm -hmm. that probably should have been there. But uh, sure list, man. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. All right, my number nine. This is an interesting one because recently I did some catch up. Mm -hmm. I had to catch up on some games. And this is one of those games. This is one of the games where I was like, you know what? It's coming to the end of the year. I should try and tick off some of the things that I've missed. So my list is a bit more thorough and represents the year as a whole. And the one that made it onto my list. <laughs> I said NIST because it's mm -hmm. near automata slash automata slash tomato. Mm -hmm. I don't know how people want to say that. No one seems to have decided how it's pronounced. But I started near two weeks ago, I think. And I feel a bit guilty because I don't like reviewing games or putting them on my list if I haven't fully beaten them. And for anyone who's played Nier knows that there's like five different playthroughs, which aren't technically repeats. They they change, and I'm only on the second one. So who knows? Maybe this game would go further up my list or drop off completely by the time I finish the game. Uh, I feel guilty about that. I've finished every other game on this list, but, you know, we ain't got all the time in the world. Yeah. And I really enjoyed what I played of Nier. Uh, we talked about it briefly in our last patreon podcast plug 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 uh, but the things i like about nia um i love its personality and its charm mm -hmm. it's really really weird in a way that sometimes doesn't even make sense for like the context or the world it just feels like the people are on coke sometimes it's like there's some parts in this game which i, I think i was telling you about some parts because you skipped some of the side quests it doesn't make any fucking sense <laughs> it's like what are you talking about I think the best example is there was a side quest where you had to collect five stamps. And I was like, this is a very, very gen generic quest structure. A collectathon. How boring. And then every person you collect a stamp from is just fucking mad. Like one person is humping the ground going, I love stamps! And you're like, what are you, what are you doing? And this one person is just really aggressive. He's like, get away from me. You can't have my stamp. Actually, no, you can have my stamp. And I'm like, the, what are you, who writ this? Were you high? This doesn't make any sense. And then at the end of the quest, you go into a theater and then there's there's a robot show called Romeos and Juliets. And then the robots do a little, a little play, but there's three Romeos and three Juliets. And then they end up all killing each other. And then a the guy just gives you a stamp. And I, I don't know. I just don't know what's going on through half this game. It's absolute madness. It's lunacy. And it's really compelling. It's one of the things that made me want to keep playing it because I was like, I just want to see what happens next. Um, sometimes Nier feels like it's being weird for the purpose of just being weird, but other times it's interesting and compelling and creative enough that you want to keep pushing on and seeing and see what happens. I also had a pretty good time with the combat in Nier. Uh, I know it can maybe be hit or miss for certain people, but it's by Platinum Games, and they create very cinematic, fluid, and flashy-looking combat. And I think I put like 30 hours into the game, and I'm not really that bored of it so far. 
I think they do a good job of mixing up the enemy types. They're all silly and kind of cute looking robots. But there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of variations of those silly little things. Um, the environments are not much to be desired. They're a bit boring and bland. But it kind of adds to the strange tone of the game when you're just walking through a blank desert and nothing's really happening. It's kind of hard to quantify the, the tones and the feel of Nia. It's a very strange game and even the way it plays is very unusual. Yes. And In so many ways that it's just really memorable. It's got an amazing soundtrack. I was getting to it. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it does. It has an amazing and very bizarre soundtrack. And I'm yeah. really glad that you told me that the lyrics are complete gibberish. <laughs> because yes. I would have just assumed, yeah, it's from a Japanese company. Maybe it's some Japanese girl spewing some very insightful and poetic words. But I'm very happy to hear that it's gibberish for everyone, for yeah. all languages. That's awesome. It's yeah, very... the lady that did all the singing said she would just sort of sing what sounded right to her. And it's all gibberish, which is incredible. <laughs> and which makes sense within the context of the game, because the game is a lot about robots trying to understand human beings and stuff so i i understand what they're going for i also like some of the rpg systems in Nier. there's a really fun system where as an android you have to actually manually plug in certain ui systems if you want to see enemy health if you want to see damage numbers you have to uh, set aside some spaces in your level up bar i'm mm -hmm. going to call it mm -hmm to plug in these module-like things. And if you don't want to see the enemy health or you don't mind not seeing it, you can use that space instead for giving yourself more damage or regenerating health. And I like that, I like that system, that a level of choice where if you want to be more powerful, you can just switch out the ability to have a mini map or something like that. I think that's really unique and plays into you actually being an Android. Uh, I don't think I've even touched on the story because I don't really know what's going on, so I'm just <laughs> going to leave that for people to discover. Or for, if you've already played it, don't bother explaining it to me. I kind of like well, not you really understanding what's going on. Well, you haven't finished it either, so... Yeah, I'm on playthrough B. But I understand your androids, humans uh, have left, and there's aliens and robots, and you slash them. You slash them good. Mm -hmm. And that's all I need to know. I'm, I'm playing the game because I find it interesting and unusual. Yeah. Um, we'll see how it goes in the future. I am going to slowly keep playing it. I have stopped because I was trying to push through some stuff I'd missed this year to see if I really, really liked them and they would make it onto my list. Mm. So maybe end of December, January, I will get back into it and see where it goes. Because it's, as I said, it's the only game on this list I haven't beaten yet. And I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes. Yeah, it goes some neat places and uh, it's not on my list, but... Uh... I, mm. I have great respect for Nier, and I really do like many, many things about it. I just, by about hour five, I was completely bored of playing it. Mm, <laughs> and interesting. And uh, there was, I played like another 10, almost 15 hours of it, and it was just, I just found it horribly boring to play. But boy, are there some really cool things in Nier. And, uh... <laughs> You know, the further we get away from it, from me, have, like the longer time I spend having not played it, I, you know, I'll forget about the things I don't like about it and just look back on it and in a fairly positive light overall. I would say because it's uh, it's super creative and definitely one of the most unique uh, and bizarre things that have come, mm -hmm. that has come out this year. Uh, in, yeah, yeah, and it's been really cool to see it. Uh, be very successful, you know, like, yeah. like widespread, you know, it hasn't like sold like crazy, but it's been sold better than they ever thought it would. And uh, Especially in comparison great. to the first game being such a weird, small cult classic. Uh, RPG. Yeah. 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 So good on them. Um, it's that cool. was the first of the really cool. Well, I guess it wasn't the first, but it was the beginning of the, the you know, 2017 Japanese games are awesome. Yeah. You know, it was one of the first ones of the year. And, uh, yeah. It's a... That soundtrack, my God. Whew! Yeah. It's that's good. a, I, I that's really a top like ten it. item right there. Just the Nier Automata <laughs> OST. <laughs> yeah. It's a really, really cool game. I had no idea it was going to sneak onto my list. But so far, I've had a really, really good time. And I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Great! 
Number nine. On to, on to you, sir. Uh, my number nine is Destiny 2. Fuck you. Number eight. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we talked about it a lot. You we can. Have, We've talked about it twice. We have done two reviews of Destiny 2 and talked about mm. it a lot in other places. Um, I will say I find many aspects of Destiny 2 horribly disappointing. In ways that mm. I didn't think it would be disappointing, not in ways yeah. that Destiny One was disappointing, um, and I am regularly disappointed and mad and confused by Bungie and how they seemingly have no idea what they're doing. And I want this game, uh, Destiny, at its best, could still be one of the greatest things ever made. But <laughs> even with all the problems it has, I fucking just want to go play it <laughs> right I, now i am um, i feel bad that people like yourself and even more hardcore people uh, are disappointed with the overall package of destiny 2 because destiny 1 i think we talked about it a lot in the past cool premise uh needed a lot of improvements and it's really felt like that was going to happen in 2 and i'm just going to go ahead and say destiny 2 is my number eight so we might as well have oh, a little perfect. chat about it. Great. Yeah. Um, for me, we've gone through this. I'm just going to summarize. Uh, for me, it's been very comfy. Yes. I played through all the unique content, played the Nightfalls with you guys, and just had a mostly good time. Not very impressed with the DLC so far, but I haven't even beaten it. Yeah. I've seen everything there is to offer, but the unique content in it isn't blowing my socks off, to say. But, um... I don't want to trade old ground because we really have talked about this so yeah, much. Yeah, I'll just again, say that like, it's on my list because it, I love playing it. Like it, the core loop of it is, it's it plays so well and looks so good and it's extremely comfy and I like. In 2017, maybe more than any other year, it's nice to have a game that I can just go and play and not think about much of anything mm -hmm. and you know, listen to a podcast or play with some friends and we don't, you know, you don't have to communicate about what you're doing. You can just play it and chat about other things. <laughs> and yeah, and I still really enjoy the, the core loop of it and, you know, of grinding for things and and just being in that world and, and getting new gear. And, and it's, I feel like after this year, I should make a rule and be like, either Destiny is going to be on my list every year for the next six years, or it's never going to be on my list again. Uh, <laughs> because Just because, like, my feelings of it are probably never going to change, you know. I, I will probably still deeply enjoy Destiny for the <laughs> rest of its lifetime, and I will probably play an enormous amount of it next year. Um in spite of all of the things about it that are underwhelming. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show, like Destiny 1, the, the good things in, in Destiny are so good that they are they make it it makes it very easy to forget or overlook the the, the all of the problems. So Yeah. That's the last the of the games the... on my list that I have complaints about. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the complaints <clears throat> For Destiny usually come from the fans of the game that just yes. want to see it be perfect and yes. go all the way. I feel like everyone who complains about Destiny has played the game a lot. Yeah, I would say so. Just quickly to give a, a brief summary on my view. Again, description for pretty detailed insights and opinions on Destiny 2 from us two. Yeah. You've actually reviewed it twice. Once for yeah, the yes. PS4 and then we had a co-op review for the PC. But um, I am quite a casual player of Destiny. I always was. And I've really, really enjoyed playing it casually. It's very comfy. Yeah. It's nice to have something always there. I'm not a huge multiplayer gamer. So a lot of the times I don't really have like a game on the side just to pop into for like 30 minutes. And finally I have something. I'm not as annoyed about the lack of stuff or improvements because as i said i'm not as invested but i feel for the fans and the people who want to play this game all the time and i i wish it was that for them but for me personally this is probably the reason it's one step above your list is because i like it yeah i do too <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not invested enough to get pissed off about its shortcomings. I just enjoy jumping in every so often. I'm going to keep doing it across 2018, I'm sure. Looks good, plays good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you 
not do the nightfall this week. <laughs> nah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I've already done it on one character. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, Destiny. The, the never-ending torture of Destiny. Can't escape it. I can't quit you, <sighs> Destiny. No. Uh, they get it right. Eventually. Maybe. <laughs> for the third and final game. Yeah, the final piece of DLC for the final game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess that means it's time for my number eight. Right back to you. All right. Hang on to your hat. It's Super uh, Mario Odyssey. Oh, cool. Uh, again, we have reviewed it. <laughs> um, you have not played it. Only I have. Not yet. Uh, you will play it eventually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Mario Odyssey is a quality video game. It is adorable and delightful, very consistently. And the part that has made me really start to like it has come after beating, you know, beating the campaign, quote unquote. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is now that I'm down to a smaller number of moons, I'm at like 550 now, I think. Um, I have really started to enjoy going to Toad, getting him to mark my map with all the missing stars, or moons rather, and then going to the location on the map that says there is a moon right here, and figuring out how, where is this moon? Um, <laughs> it's, it's a, I have found it to be a really clever way to get me to really explore and experiment. Um, I guess it's turned into like game. a puzzle game, essentially. Yes, a lot more so than the first like 20 hours with that game because you just get so many moons there's yeah. so many hidden so obviously um but yeah in the in the dwindling moon count hours now it's become uh an interesting solution to what we sort of you know sort of the zelda problem where it's like you know you can you could experiment with these systems and explore <laughs> the world but like eh. And they don't do anything at all to, to encourage that, which is probably for the better. Um, Mario does it smart where it's like, hey, if you want to know where these moons are on the map, just spend 50 coins for you know each each moon location. And mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I, I really appreciate that they've done that because I was playing it again last night and went to the Sand Kingdom and found like 11 more moons. And uh, they were some of them were in areas I didn't even know existed. And it's like, wow, this is a the whole hidden level that is here that I had no idea about. And uh, or here's this secret passage behind the building in the town, and I had no idea it was there. And um, I that has been where I have enjoyed it most. It's where it's been most surprising and impressive uh, is in that uh, post-game exploration. And it's. Uh, you know, it's pretty easy to pick up and put down, and I am terrible at playing it, so please don't laugh at the gameplay. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> but it's it's nice yeah. to just be able to launch it every, you know, every couple of days, maybe once a week, play it for an hour, and then put it down, and I will probably just keep poking at it uh, for hmm. another quite a while, I would imagine. And, uh, you know, we, yeah. I have a few issues with it control-wise. Most of that is just me being bad at it. Um, it's not ever very challenging, which is nice as well. You know, sort of like the Destiny thing where it's like, eh, I can just sort of yeah. enjoy the charm and delight of this world and explore it and be constantly rewarded because there are nine trillion bajillion moons to find. Um, Christ. Yeah, so that's Mario. Everyone knows it. And, uh, and we've reviewed it. Yeah, and I, re have. I have come to enjoy it even more than I was when we reviewed it. So Cool. Yeah. Another quality Switch game. All right, let's keep the Nintendo train going. Oh. My number seven is Breath of the Wild. Wow. Yeah. What a I, twist. I had a really good time with Breath of the Wild. Again, we have reviewed it, and I think, I think we went... In, quite deep with our review yeah, we went into a lot like of the hour. issues yeah yeah and we also talked about it on our patreon podcast sorry for fucking saying <laughs> it a lot but we talked about a lot of stuff in the podcast okay we did. but uh we've gone over all the things that we liked and all the problems that we had which was quite a lot i don't want to tread old ground but overall i found it to be <clears throat> a refreshing format i think that is in my opinion the thing that i think should be praised the most having the courage to be like hey player 
if you want to go take on Ganon yeah. right now, go for it. You're going to get squished, probably, but you can if you want. You can go to this dungeon, this dungeon, or none of the dungeons, or just two. I, I just think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And you don't really see game developers having... Um, just having a level of trust in the player to not be stupid <laughs> and just go off and figure stuff out on their own. Yeah. Some of my favorite moments of Breath of the Wild was finding places because you didn't have map markers for a lot of the stuff. They would just be like, yeah, you go to the Zora Kingdom. And I'd be like... Uh, I know they're by water. I played I played Zelda games, so I follow an ocean. I'm like, nope, this isn't where I'm supposed to go. And sometimes there's little side quests and treasures, and you just have to follow uh, landmarks and have a look around. And I found that stuff to be really refreshing. There's other elements of it which I didn't think were so good. I think for a Zelda game, the dungeons were very weak in its design. I think the, the novelty of them being machines that actually move while you're in them is cool. Especially for a kind of a crappy piece of technology like the Wii U. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I thought it was really cool and impressive to be on a giant level that was moving. I, I know there's been games like Shadow of the Colossus where you can climb on giant beasts. But to be in a massive puzzle that moves and you can interact with aspects of it uh, was a nice novelty. Even though puzzle-wise they were pretty weak in my opinion. I thought the bosses were repetitive and pretty lame as well. Um, there's a lot of problems with this game. I don't agree with the 10 out of 10 praise because I don't think it's very helpful to tell a developer that they've made a perfect game when I think this should be just step one of making the franchise something really cool. Mm -hmm. But overall, I had a really fun time with Breath of the Wild, even though I played it in 20 FPS on the Wii U. It was still fun. <laughs> and I'm more excited for the future of the franchise after the success or Breath of the Wild, because mm. they're going to have to do something similar because people adore Breath of the Wild, but they can't do something exactly the same. So I don't know. Yeah. Very excited to see where the franchise goes, but I uh, had a good time with mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild, um, but I don't think it's perfect. It needs some boot shine and some refining, and I think the Zelda franchise could be something really special in the future. Yeah, Zelda was a thing that like I thought about as a top ten thing, briefly. Ah, oh, interesting. Because I I really did like like the first fifteen hours or so, and mm -hmm. and even the I mean I played almost fifty hours of it. Like it's you know, <laughs> it was obviously doing things right, and um, I enjoyed just wandering around that world um, because it's you know it's a Nintendo game, so it's charming and pretty and full of good music. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's a game that the like sort of like near where it's like the further I get away from having recently played it, the more I remember liking it and mm -hmm. and yeah the 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 freedom like we talked about when we reviewed it, the freedom is incredible and it relies on me to be creative and I am not good at that when I play games <laughs> uh, and I also found you know I eventually I didn't like the dungeons, I got tired of the Korok seeds and shrines, but. Mm -hmm. Zelda is an undeniably fascinating game that uh, I actually do like and, and I have fond memories of and I am very happy that I have played it. And, uh, yeah. You know, I have to capture footage for it now and I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, curious to, to do that because I haven't really played it in okay. a long time. So, cool. yeah. Zelda is a very neat game and I'm glad we have... Uh, it's nice... Is this... Wait a second. Is this the first time we've ever had... A Nintendo game on both of our lists because I think it might be the first time we've ever had, I've had a Nintendo Mario game on Maker was list? on my list in 2015. Oh, okay, then you are right then, yeah. But this is the first time we both had a Nintendo game on our list. Wow. Yeah. We're doing it. The future is bright. Yeah. <sighs> Wonderful. On to you, mate. Number seven. Yeah. Yeah. My number seven is Pyre. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, Pyre is the latest game from Supergiant Games. We did not... We talked about it in non-reviews. Um, I very much like Supergiant's games. Uh, they are always gorgeous and full of great music and really neat worlds with really really in, like fascinating game design that is like completely different yeah. from every game. Um... And Pyre is probably their best game, um, even though I like elements 
of Bastion more, and I like you know the, I I like the gameplay in Transistor more. But Pyre is just this really cool, really creative game that is probably seventy percent visual novel, <laughs> um, cool. and maybe a little less than that. And then the other part of it is a sports game where you're sort of playing basketball, sort of, and. I sh certainly didn't think I would care for the gameplay. Um, it's a type of gameplay that, you know, you might not ever like it, but after the game does a really good job of getting more challenging as it goes on in some really interesting ways. Hmm. And um, by the second half of that game, because it's long actually, it was probably almost 15 hours for me. Wow. Um, by the second half of that game, I was like really into the, the, the gameplay and, uh, and, it gets really frantic and stressful in some really cool ways and and then it's also the visual novel part is all really good they they've got they've crafted a really uh, neat and original world and your cast of characters it's sort of like mass effect 2 where you're getting a, building a crew of people up over the course of the game and they're starting to like you more and the cast of characters are all fantastic uh, and the relationships you build with them is really neat because like some you can Pyre is kind of crazy that I, I would love to see like a, a tree of all the different possibilities for that game because you can have very like there's no failure state in that game you can but you can lose your teammates and they can be lost in different orders like they're not dying they're being sent back to basically the real world and uh it's a game that is like surprisingly varied and complex in terms of the sort of player choice and impact it has. Uh, and it's got amazing art and um, one of the best soundtracks of the year. And it's got some of the best writing of the year. And it's phenomenal. Um, cool. I, I Certainly not for everybody. I definitely didn't expect it to be so much of a visual novel. I, I was fine with that. Um, but if you <clears throat> if you like super giant games, you should definitely play it because it's it's another one of those products. And yeah, I, think, I, I will be getting to it eventually. Yeah, I'll be very curious to see if it clicks for you at all. Um, I'm not sure. You know, I I, I love me some world uh, building and lore and you know detailed explanations of things and weird history and um, there's a lot of that in this game which I love and um, it's a it's a game that is has tension like in the in the writing but it's not a negative game ever like the cast of there's great friendship and camaraderie between the crew which is um i feel like games really like to rely on like oh drama between the crew you know uh, miranda mm. hates hates uh jack on on the normandy and mass effect but in pyre you're crew is all like they all have such, everyone has the same goal and so everyone is so like working together all the time and uh, it was really nice to play a game that was just it was a well written and dramatic story but it was drama not from from you know conflict within the group it was uh, it was a very positive game as well which 2017 definitely needed mm. uh, and yeah Pyre is wonderful it's a wonderful wonderful game and uh, everybody should at least give it a try because it's uh, certainly it's maybe the most strange and unique game that's come or one of the most strange and unique games this year because you know yeah. a visual novel and a sports game y y you know it's uh, <laughs> yeah it's, saying that out loud is a weird combo um, yeah I, I really look forward to giving it a go mm. we, we will probably be talking about it sometime next year in our podcast when I eventually get to it I have only just recently started going through what they called super massive super giant super giant super giant's back catalog i went through bastion and i'm a little way through transistor and their games are so unusual and varied from one another that i'm really looking forward to playing pyre and then being ready for their next game because they're a strange studio who yes. are making unique indie games and i like unique stuff i like trying new things so i want to be caught up with super giants games for the future because they make cool stuff their games all have like a very they're all like com extremely similar in in a lot of ways like you know the presentation is always like they have a different art style but it's always this like hyper polished ultra beautiful you know super stylish presentation and there's a lot of very clear 
similarities and philosophies between all their games, but it's uh, mm. it's fascinating every time they put a game out because it is so different uh, from the yeah. last one. And yeah, Pyre is uh, exceptional, and I I really. I only I, I played it took me like two weeks to beat it because I was just playing for like an hour each night just sort of savoring it and uh, hmm. and yeah it, it's a really neat game any game that creates a half halfway decently realized fake language is a good game in my books <laughs> they all speak not English in that game and it's I was reading a, a post about it from the developer and saying it's a fairly decent lexicon that they have created for it which is cool as well wow. i like nerdy. i wonder if anyone can speak that fluently no i don't think it's like i think it's i don't think it exists in any way you know it, they would basically like build the language around the writing that they had so it was like mm -hmm. they're sort of translating it but uh it's a very convincing uh, yeah they they build great great worlds and back it up with great systems and uh yeah pyre great game cool. all right on to my number six. This is another game which we have reviewed. Mm -hmm. It is Lost Legacy. Oh, good. <laughs> or should I say Uncharted, the Lost Legacy. Thank God. I really, really liked the Lost Legacy. Me too. <laughs> I really, really, really enjoyed it. Uh, as, as I said, review down in the description. But to summarize, it's just more Uncharted 4 which is good stuff. But I think this is one of my favorite entries into the series. It has some of the best settings, some of the best cinematic moments, some of the best gameplay sequences, and the partnership between Chloe and Nadine worked much better than I thought it was going to. They were really great characters, a great partnership with a more dynamic relationship than is seen sometimes in the Uncharted franchise, and just overall a great entry into the series. And something that I think and everyone should play if you like the Uncharted games. Yeah, Uncharted is one of the games that I, god damn it, I wish it was on my list. And it should be, really. It shouldn't be. It should be like 9 or 10 because those other games are so much worse than Uncharted. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, Uncharted is phenomenal. And, yeah, it's it's exceptionally well it. written. And I had, yeah, I had just a great, great time playing it through. And I played through a fair chunk of it recently again. Um, and it's still excellent, and, and mm -hmm. it's probably their. It's I would say their best written Uncharted game in terms of yeah, <clears throat> in terms of fun. Uh, it's not overwritten in a, but it's still very fun and entertaining in a way that the other games, you know, the other games sort of rely on jokes a lot more, and this game just has a more natural sense of fun to it that I really yeah. really liked. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's excellent in every way, and. Yeah, I would have never thought that I would want more Uncharted after Uncharted Three, and then Uncharted Four came out, and after Uncharted Four, I was like, "No, please, God, no, please." And then they put this out, and I was like, oh, "I play another one of those," <laughs> <laughs> which is crazy. I, you know, this is the fifth Uncharted game in yeah. in a decade. Uh, so, Naughty Dog knows how to make good products. It turns out they do. They are yeah. consistent. <clears throat> well, that was fast. Yeah, if you want more detail, again, in the description, mm -hmm. we both reviewed it. But I think it's a pretty easy game to summarize. It's more Uncharted 4, and it's good stuff. All right, number six. Mm -hmm. Please don't freak out and let me explain why it's at number six, because I, th I think you and Ben expect it to be higher. Number six is SteamWorld Dig 2. Okay, okay. Um, I'm listening. SteamWorld <laughs> Dig 2 is a perfect video game. I have claimed yeah. this before, and I will defend it to the death. I cannot fault a single thing about SteamWorld Dig 2. Okay. It is purely fun and enjoyable. And I've played it through twice already, and I might play it a third time. Because it's just this deeply OCD satisfying clearing, you know, thing. And, and yeah. it plays perfectly. It's got a, an amazing look. It's got an amazing music. It's got a great upgrade tree. Uh, it was, it's maybe one of the best surprises of the year because I just, I bought it on a whim, not thinking I would like it and it turned out it's amazing. The only reason it's not higher on the list is because nothing about it is <clears throat> uh, particularly profound or impactful. Um, I would say my top five all had, uh, you know, well, you'll see what I mean. Like they, they all had a bit more of an impact on me, whereas SteamWorld Dig 2, it's like, you know, you know, it's not like I, I know. Yeah, it's not teaching me anything about 
you know, what I like about games. It's not really shocking me with the story. It's not, you know, it's, it's nothing about it is uh, amazing, like profound or impactful, like I said. But um, boy, is it ever a good game. Wow. <laughs> Holy cannoli. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if this was best games of the year, like objectively, I would probably make an argument for SteamWorld Dig to be number one. What? Or or maybe number two. Well, number two, maybe. Or at okay. minimum top three. I can three. get with um, okay. Because it's like I, I get bothered by things in games pretty regularly and pretty easily. And I was never once. There is literally not a single thing in SteamWorld Dig 2 that I can say, eh, I don't know. I don't like that as much as the rest of the game. Nothing. There's nothing. Mm, it's amazing. It's a delightful little game. And it introduced me to a new world and studio which i'll be keeping my eye on very closely steam world what's that name coming. uh image and form i think they're okay yeah sort of a weird um i think they're swiss or something like that and um <laughs> yeah it's uh it's delightful and it's probably the best switch game out there it plays so well on the switch and looks so good and um it's it's the, the upgrades you get were really surprising to me as well like i when when you had said you were playing steam world dig one and you were like mm -hmm. this the the double jump you get is, is huge what a game changer and i'm just thinking oh my god just you wait until you play two <laughs> these like the some of the upgrades in the later game i just had i had no idea that they were coming and they changed the game so substantially yeah i, I just got a very substantial one I don't yeah. know if we should say in case people want to play it and have it revealed for them yeah, I know I what you got mean the, the second movement thing yeah. which makes it very easy to get out of the mine there's more to come uh, oh. I'll say that and yeah it's um, I, I don't really like Metroidvanias a lot but this is sort of a, a the way it handles it is sort of I don't know there's something about it that's like you can basically get everywhere uh, really I don't even know if it even counts <clears throat> as a Metroidvania. Yeah, I don't know either. Like it's 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 I, it's not a Metroidvania, but it has Metroidvania uh, like inspirations. Uh, yeah. You know, with like returning to some of the caves. That's like I can't get to this last you know item in the cave until I have a different upgrade. Um, yeah. But it, it guides you there most of the time, unless yeah. you're doing like a 100% run. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, so it's it's just really smartly well made and. Yeah, it's it's a truly delightful gem of a game, and uh, if you have a, I mean, it's on every console imaginable. But if you have a Switch, uh, it's like a must play on the Switch, even though it's you know perfect on all the other consoles it's on. I think the Switch is the place to play it. Uh, whew! What a surprise it was! Wow. Yeah, I've been playing through the series. Yeah. And I've been really enjoying it. I beat the first one a few days back. And I'm quite far through the second one, mm -hmm. I think. I think I'm like four hours into it. Yeah, it's it's a lot longer than I thought, uh, which is nice. It was, it was like They're very, very hours. comfy yeah. games. Yeah. I will say that I enjoy the format of the first one a bit more than the second one. Right. But I, but I understand for a sequel, they have to develop on the original format. Uh, in the first one, because I know you, you just played the second one because it's all yeah. that was on the Switch, but in the first one, there is a single mine right. and you're just always going down. And there was something... I There's something I really liked about there being one hole right. and you're just going deeper and deeper and it was really satisfying OCD-wise. And it was much simpler in the first one. There was no, like, different places or characters. There was just, like, a shop at the top yeah. for you to upgrade and your only mission was to go down. That was it. Yeah. And there was... I don't know, something really focused and clean about that that I really liked um, about the first one. But the second one has improved on so many different features and systems that I think overall it's the better product. Yeah. I'm really enjoying too. I've just got down to like a swampy area and okay. you have to destroy those three things. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that yeah, area yeah. is a pain in the ass. This is the first <laughs> area where I'm like, Jesus Christ, leave me alone. I'm like in in the area where there's the pink squidgy things that oh. are shooting projectiles at me while I'm bouncing around, and there's those fucking snails yeah. that are rolling around. It's just a nightmare. Bastards, yeah, yeah. You're but probably it's, it's, actually it's only fun. like halfway through it, honestly. Yeah, um, awesome. That's good to hear. If you go um, for like a fairly complete playthrough, you know. Uh, 
I think it's taken some inspiration from Spelunky. Probably, I think yeah. some of the highlights mm. of the game are when things interact which you didn't even know can interact. <laughs> yeah. Like when a snare runs at you and it bounces off a mushroom and then it hits something else and it's like a chain reaction. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, what is going on? What do I do? The snails this, uh, bouncing around in the mushrooms like endlessly. It's hilarious to me. It's, yeah. It's always funny. Uh, it's, a, it's a clever and very comfy game yes. that I think a lot of people have overlooked. And I, you can probably pick them up pretty cheap, especially the first one, which I think is worth playing. Oh, uh, so give it a look, people, if you haven't seen it. Yeah. And if you only have a Switch or if you want to play something on the Switch, only two is out on the Switch, but <clears throat> wow. it's it's. I, I didn't play the first one, probably never will, because it seems really hard to yeah. go back to after the quality of life changes in two. Maybe, like, after six months or a year when you've forgotten maybe, yeah, like maybe. all the really that's, refined elements of two, then maybe? That's if I stop playing, though. Yeah. Because I, I had to start a, a third playthrough to capture footage for it, and... I'm kind of thinking like oh, I could just keep playing, you know. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a it's a great little game. Yeah. I would love like some sort of endless version of that game where it's just. I'm like, really surprised it wasn't a rogue like game to begin with. Yeah, I'm glad it's not, but I would love. Yeah, me too. Me too. I would love if like once you beat the game, you just unlock like an endless mine that you can just dig, and it's like yeah, yeah you'll eventually 100%. just upgrade like have every single mod installed. But like, oh, dude, yes, I would. I would play that all day. Yeah, if it was just endless digging and sort of you know maybe it increasingly gets difficult, uh, that would be amazing. Um, yes. Maybe for the third one, maybe they'll do that for the third one. God, that'd be so good. Yeah. Ah, Steamroll Day Two. Great music. Lots of good music this year. Actually, yes, I love um, the town music theme for the second one. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say I a lot it. of the games on this list have really exceptional soundtracks. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's Steamworld Dig Two. It's a good game. It is, yeah. My number five. Here we go. Getting into the the serious stuff. Now. Yes. My number five for the year is Neo. Right. This is a game that I really don't want to have to get into again because, man, is it complex. Much more footage. complex. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm, oh, God. I'm, okay. No, yeah, I can, I can do that. <laughs> Mentally prepare. The reason I'm apprehensive is because this game took me about 60 hours, which is, you know, that's, that's a significant RPG, but it took me 10 <laughs> months to beat this game. Yeah. I started it in January when it came out, and it only I beat it like a couple of months back. <laughs> It was so stressful and exhausting that I could only play like in very small chunks. And it might be my greatest game accomplishment of all time beating this game. And <laughs> there will probably be someone listening like, just get good at the game. Yeah. I know that comes with the soul jump, the, the genre of the souls, but I found this more difficult than Bloodborne, Dark Souls, all of them. Wow. I thought this game was a real challenge. Um, again, there is a review in the description Oh yeah, um, Jesus, we did review that. Fuck, yeah, that was, all, that was it, the it, first review roundup, wow. And it was it's quite a long review because this game is quite complex. Yeah. I assumed it was a Souls copy, copycat, and there's a lot of complex RPG systems in here. There's multiple upgrade trees, different weapons which you have to dedicate towards, different builds. There's three different ways to hold your weapon. There is a Diablo-esque loot system. It's, it's a really complex and deep RPG, mm. which takes a long time to master. And unless I missed it, there's no way to get people into help, which <laughs> I do in Dark Souls, because I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a proud guy. I'm just having fun. And in Neo, you can't do that. So I had Oof. to beat the whole game on my own. And it was, it was vicious at times. But I, um, I think this does the soul genre best for companies outside of From. Mm. I was surprised um, I at played... how many ways it is not a Souls game as well. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it does a lot of unique yeah. things, which is cool. Uh, like, I was playing The Surge recently, which right. is another Soul-esque game. And I was playing The Surge, and you go into, like, this medical bay, which is your bonfire place. Mm. And then you come back out with the medical bay, and every enemy is alive again. Mm -hmm. Which I understand, that's, that's what the Soul games do, mm -hmm. but there's no context. They oh. just go, well, it, it's a, it's a Souls-like game, so enemies come back when you go to the bonfire. Yeah, it's the like, Souls in the games are good about like, game. giving some sort of, like, sort of lore explanations for, like, yeah, why. Yeah. And, and in Neo, you go to a shrine, and it's all spiritual, and they're all demons. So right, I right. think there is actually some um, lore behind why they can come back. 
But like in in the surge, which which I'm not hating on, I'm actually having a pretty good time with it. It's much mm -hmm. slower than the rest of the soul genre, so it's taking some adapting to get used to it. But when I played that, it's like I, I get it's a Souls game, but you don't have to follow the blueprint, especially if there's no logical explanation in the context of this world why enemies are coming back to life because I walked through a door. Like why are they alive again? Yeah, yeah. So. That's when it comes to copycats, which I think maybe I should just throw that term out the window because people have accepted this as a genre now. It's yeah. not just a franchise. I think Neo is the best thing outside of From Software to take on this formula. Cool. It was like, hey, we did Ninja Gaiden slash Gaiden. I'm not sure how to say that correctly. I'm sorry. They had that franchise that people loved and they mixed it with something that is new and that people were also loving and they made a beautiful hybrid out of it. Yeah. I'm never playing the old Ninja Gaiden games because I don't like hack and slash games and it looks fucking difficult. Like, I watch some Twitch streams and it's brutal. Um, but Neo was a great mountain to climb this year. It was a test of my patience. I really liked the design, the monster design, the world. It plays good and uh, had a good time. I don't know if I'll be going in for the DLCs because I'm, I'm still exhausted. <laughs> still recover recovering. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I think they're just called Team Ninja. I think the people who made it. Um, uh, yeah. So far, outside of From Software, they have done it the best. And there will be many copycats to come. Mm -hmm. And I think Neo is uh, at the top of the charts so far. Yeah, Team Ninja. Yeah, they're the Ninja Gaiden people. So. Yeah. They did a very a really good job. They spent at like taking the genre of an enormous amount of time making this game as well. Like it was mm -hmm. announced in. 2008 or something like yeah it's crazy it's it's, like, it's always it, neat when a game like team ninja i'm just looking at the wiki team ninja joined like took over the project or joined the project in 2010 uh mm. and it's always neat when a game goes through like a horribly long development cycle and then actually comes out uh, being really great um, yeah it's it's always sort of shocking when that happens um mm -hmm. And Neo, Neo was one, again another. The first half of this year, the the Japanese games were like dominating everything. You know. Yeah, big time. Near Neo, Resident Evil, um, Yakuza, uh, Zelda, Persona. Like it's crazy that they mm -hmm. had they had such a good year this year, and um, it's awesome to see North America and like the North American market really taking to a lot of these Japanese games as well. Uh, the, I feel yeah. like the big Japanese developers have found, have started to like really find a sweet spot of like, okay, we're still going to make a crazy Japanese game, but it's going to be just slightly friendly in a way that will make it click with a decent number of people in North America. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, that's, it's awesome to see. And Neo definitely was the first of the many or one of the you know early big surprises of the year where it's like wow this yeah. is uh, a neat game that's not just a blatant souls ripoff and that's yeah super it really cool. did its own thing with the uh, the formula yeah that's it's good good to see that again we reviewed it in the description if yeah, you want a geez. bit more insight because there's a lot going on in this game yeah but uh, I I really liked the design of it and I think it was pretty balanced I only got really frustrated at one boss. Mm. Um, I can't remember the, na the name of it. They were in Japanese. But for people who played the game, he has two swords and he can shoot air attacks at you. And I wanted to lose my mind because I couldn't block them or get away from them. And it drove me insane. But apart from that, really cool designs for all the bosses and enemies in the game. It's good stuff. I really, really enjoyed it. Great. That's that's my number five. Halfway through. Woohoo. Oh, God. <laughs> <sighs> My number five yeah. is the game that sits right above Pyre in my Steam library and has almost the same icon. <laughs> it's fucking Prey. <laughs> and I wish cool. that they would have slightly different names or have a different icon because, God damn it, they're so identical in Steam. <laughs> uh, yeah. Prey is a wonderful game. Um... Prey is important because it made me understand why people... It made me understand something like Zelda or Fallout, where it's like, here's this freedom, this sandbox. I'm going to just mess around in it. And it was the first game of those types of games that made me 
want to mess around and made me be creative. Um, and I think a lot of that is due to the fact that it is a very familiar game. Um, it, in a lot of ways, feels like it fell out of 2007, uh, which mm -hmm. I love. And it is uh, a, a shock game, really, in, in, in many, many ways. Um, and I feel like, as a side note, if, if this game had a story and world as good as uh, either of the main Bioshock games, this would be like one of the greatest games ever made because the systems design, I think, is and the level design is like so exceptional in this game. And, yes, um, I really like the, the uh, level design of the station. Yeah, and so Prey was the... It, yeah, it made me like understand being experimental with a game, and it was the first game that really made me want to be experimental with it because I think it was familiar it's a first person shooter and you know it's sort of bioshock like and it's got all these things that i recognize and then all these things that are kind of weird and it makes me and the way they design their levels i think it just sort of makes me when i'm playing it, i'm like i'm just gonna do this and see what happens and and it works all the time and uh i am in the footage you will see i am currently doing a kill everyone on the station run um which <laughs> has been going for you know i just sort of poke at it every now and then uh because i know what can happen and i really want to see what that game is like when there's no one alive um it's right yeah, now that will be interesting actually. it's very quiet i will say because <laughs> i killed december and january so i have no one talking in my ear ever wow um the game does a good job of i discovered this in the last play session that i did when capturing footage i the game does a good, is smart. It's smart about like, hey, you completed this objective thing, even though we don't necessarily have anyone to tell you what to do next. The game just will update and be like, okay, this is your next objective. So it doesn't like, it's not like Fallout or something like earlier, like Fallout Three, where it's like, I killed all the NPCs. Now the game just exploded. Uh, <laughs> like it, it held, holds together in some really neat ways. But um, yeah, it's it's quiet. I like quiet games. It's sort of quiet and lonely and kind of spooky. Um, and tense and a lot of the times and then you layer that in with like really great level design and really cool systems and um, yeah I, it's it made me understand video games better which I think is uh, important and um, and I really it, it really took me by surprise because I you know going into it it was like yeah this looks cool uh, this looks like a shock game and then it, I was surprised by how smartly designed it is and how, how creative you can get with some of it and it's sort of in a sort of simple way like I uh, mm -hmm. in the footage I think I, I include I will probably include this there's a section I don't know if you remember where you're in the cargo bays and you have to like set up a bunch of turrets and yeah. open a door um, I killed the lady that had the code and took the code and memorized it and then reloaded a save because everyone attacked me and that's not what I wanted to have happen. So I remembered the code, <laughs> 0805, punched it into the door and opened the door and then ran upstairs and watched as all the aliens came in and killed all of the people inside. Wow. <laughs> and and cool, then yeah. I would just chuck a, the occasional recycler charge down to clean up the aliens and turn them into crafting materials, which I think is also a, a hilarious thing that you can do. And... Uh, and in that moment, I was like, yeah, that's that's Prey right there. Perfect. You know, there are not a lot of first-person shooters that sort of embrace that freedom and creativity. And it's it's a really neat merger of, like, eh, it's sort of open world. It's sort of systems heavy, but it's also like a linear Bioshock sort of game. Except you can, you know, go around the station in whatever order you want and... Uh, yeah, it's just a, it's a fascinating, I think it's Arcane's best game, for me at least. Um, you know, elements of the Dishonored games are, are superior, um, but it was the the game that, the, the what do they call it? The uh, immersive oh, sim um, that it, yeah. clicked with me most, more than any other. And, and it's something we've talked about with Dishonored, where it's like, here are all these really cool things and abilities, but I just never use any of them because it's, I, I'm just going to sneak through the environment with blink yeah and prey did a good job of for whatever reason encouraging me to get creative and uh, it was I, a bit I of a revelation for i don't me. think it did really encourage you i think you just did it well that's yeah we, 
yeah, we reviewed this game and I was much less positive about Prey because I didn't really have those moments. Right. So I think the credit is probably on yourself. Well, maybe. Because but if, it, it, if the game had encouraged me to do those things, I like to think that I would have done them. I didn't ignore the game. Yeah. I just didn't stumble upon those situations and moments that made it memorable for me. I think what I mean by encourage is more like because it's the way it's built is familiar in a way that like tri it, it triggered the creativity in me in a way okay. because of its design. So it's sort of like half encouraged, half unintentional, half on me. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Prey. Great, great game. I love it. I am so glad it exists. Bless you, Bethesda, for allowing all of these weird single player games to come out because... I don't know if we'll get any more games like Prey for a very long time. Maybe they'll make yeah. a Prey 2. I don't even know. Bethesda's so no. weird. I don't think they'll make well, a Prey 2 because nah. no one bought it. Um, but it's nice to dream. Even if we don't get another Prey, I am so happy we got Prey because it's it's just it's so strange that it exists in 2017. Like I said, it, it really does feel like it fell out of a portal from a decade or, or even more, <laughs> yeah. like more than a decade ago, where it's like, what is this game? Like it's, yeah, it's fascinating. And I, uh, I really do like it a great deal. And I'm glad I didn't get super invested in the story because it's kind of a fart, but. It's, yeah, it's poop. The story starts off so well as well. Oh, oh well yeah. That's okay. Um, I know I've been like pimping these out a lot, but I really enjoyed our review of Prey because we had quite differing opinions and a <laughs> yeah. lot of the time we line up. Yes. And you adored Prey and I, I liked Prey but had some pretty significant problems with it. And yeah. I think that was one of my favorite discussions of the year. Maybe alongside with Zelda as well because mm. they had similar themes of pushing players to explore and experiment themselves. And if you don't discover those things, then it really affects your experience. So, yeah. review in the description. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I, I liked Prey. But for reasons we've covered in the past, I, I had some problems which held it back for me. Yeah, that's completely valid. But, you know, I'm glad it's on your list. We've had a pretty dynamic set of lists so far. Yeah. What are we at? Your number four? This is my number four. Great. My number four for the year is Persona 5. Mm -hmm. A brand new franchise for me. I've never touched any of the Shin Megami Tensei yeah. games yeah. or the Persona games. I didn't even know the format of this game. I didn't know how it worked. I I don't even remember my first introduction to the game. I think it was just some very impressive visuals from the trailers. I Probably. mean, like, my God, does this game look stylish. Mm -hmm. And might as well quickly comment, comment on that. The game looks incredible. I don't know how a game can make a UI and a menu <laughs> system look so incredible. But god damn, the artists behind this game are super talented and just went mad with every element of how it looks. And I just... You know, I, the game is 100 hours. It took me 100 hours to beat and it never gets boring to look at. Persona 5 is a really strange game. Um, for people <laughs> who have played the Persona games, you understand how the games work. And I think quite a while back, early in the year, during one of our podcast chats, I tried to explain how it works, but I'm going to do it again. Oh, no. I'm going to do my best. So in Persona 5, you are a school kid, a high school student, and you have the power to go to a different dimension, which is inside people's consciousness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the way the game works is you figure out that you have the, the power to turn evil people or corrupt people back into good people. You can destroy the part of their brain that makes them bad. It is essentially their ego or the thing they are holding onto that has corrupted them. The neat thing about the game is when you find a target, uh, you have X amount of days to take down the target and you can use those days as you please. When you are not inside the, the mind of a villain or a horrible teacher who's abusing their students, you can do pretty much... I was going to say whatever you want. That's incorrect. But you can spend your time as you wish. There are lots of activities to do, and there are friendships to build. So outside of the, I guess, RPG side of it, it's essentially a Japanese sim game. 
where yes. you are just getting a job, you are making friends, you are working out, you're playing video games to get up your intelligence, and you oh, have to... I like yeah. that idea. <laughs> and you have to pick and choose how to spend your time, because you get about three time slots a day, and there's only X amount of days in the game. If you, if you, if you fuck up and you build your character incorrectly, you, there's nothing you can do. You've spent that time, that time has passed. Like The game goes through 12 months and then it ends. Does that aspect so you, of it feel intimidating ever? I cheated and I googled a brief guide because I was scared okay. and as I said intimidated by yeah. how the game was formed and I'm new to it. It's number five and it's an intense Japanese RPG. Yeah. So I looked up a basic guide and they were like, okay, so you go to this place and this gets up your intelligence and this and I know it's cheating but I don't like time stuff. It freaks me out, okay? I never yeah, even yeah, beat Majora's yeah. Mask because I don't like that things are timed. I don't like having time limits on stuff. But honestly, like, if you ever played it or started really diving into it, I would just send you my Word document okay. I have of, like, hey, if you want to get up your intelligence, you go to this place, and it's more efficient than doing it this way. Yeah, because it's but, sort of scary. Like, I'm an hour in, and it's like, uh, I don't want to fuck this yeah. up. Oh, God. <laughs> but after a while, I realized that friendships or relationships are the best thing in the game. The closer you are with someone, the better party benefits they have and the better they are in combat some people don't even come into your party during the combat they just give you abilities and stuff that make it really really useful like if you befriend a teacher eventually when you're in school she will give you the ability to leave the classroom and spend an extra hour of the day doing something else damn and there's like 30 characters to befriend oh and you do not have enough time to befriend all of them so again Just you have to pick like and choose <laughs> so you have to pick and choose who you want to befriend who you want to spend time building that relationship up and which benefit benefits you want to seek out and which stuff you want to you know improve and build up and it's a it's a really strange and unusual way of building up an rpg party can it's by cat, just can befriending make, people. Can your cat be a friend? Yes, okay, your good. cat is your friend. Because fuck Sa Sakamoto, I can already tell. So, oh, I've forgotten the names. Who's Sakamoto? I, uh, he's the first kid you meet in the prison. <laughs> oh, right. That's, I, I think his name Rai. Yeah, I, can't, Ryu, oh, Ryu, I don't know. That's his last name. Ryu. Ryu. Something like that. Sakamoto. He He's got a good arc. Ah. It's 100 hours, Jameson. They've all got a good I arc. I know, I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, there's actually really, really good voice acting in yeah. the game. Yeah, yeah. There's, I have noticed there's like a little bit of... Like some of the translations a little weird. Um, yes. Like, weirdly, they didn't change some of the lines which reference right. that they can't speak English. Right. Which and is very strange. Even just like the pronunciation of some of the Japanese names, it's like, oh, this is an American saying this or, you know, someone that doesn't know how to properly like flow through a Japanese name, but that's fine. That's fine. It's a hundred yeah. hour game. A little, that's forgivable. <laughs> yeah. I don't I, know why they didn't localize a few things. Yeah. There's so much effort put into the writing and voice acting that it seems strange when they're in a classroom saying, man, my English is so bad, I wish I could speak more of it. <laughs> They're in saying English. it in, like, it's perfect like, English, yeah. Yes, why like, didn't you just change that to, like, I don't know, Spanish? Yeah, like, anything. Yeah. yeah. It's, but, but that's, like, a tiny little yeah. complaint. In a otherwise really strong script, which, like, for 100 hours, that's a shit ton of writing and voice yeah. acting, which is all really well performed. And it's, it's really entertaining, and it's funny at times, and it's dark at mm. times as well. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, it's a it's a really cool journey. I will say that I think it I think it makes a misstep at the end personally. For a lot of the game, it's um, it's very Black Mirror esque, where it's touching on a lot of stuff in society and being grounded, and in in a way that comes off as really intelligent and clever. Uh, there's a lot of technology stuff in it. You are in a group called the Phantom Thieves, and the more you take down people, the more you get a social media presence. And social media is a big part of it. And it does some fun things where the um, the audience, not the audience, the public will change their opinions on you like overnight because of like one little thing. And they make yeah. assumptions like people do on the internet, which I really liked. That's fun. And I thought the writing and, you know, the the kind of referencing stuff from reality was really clever. And then at the end, it just goes a little bit off course where you're not...
taking down like uh, a fraud or a mobster you take down a god oh and then at the end like reality's falling apart and everyone's chanting we believe in you phantom thieves oh. and i was like oh man come oh. on you it was going so well <laughs> Up till then, like, did you have to say everything have to have a god? It was like watching a DC film. Like, c can't you just like do small, clever stuff and then just end the game? Yeah. So, it, it lost me for the last ten to twenty hours. Oh wow! Um, I thought that'd be like last two hours. <laughs> oh no, Jesus. this game's long. It's, it's like the last dungeon. The dungeon's like ten hours. Oh um, my god! I enjoyed the gameplay of the last dungeon. It's got some good challenges. The last boss has like five different arms and each arm is a different monster which you have to figure out and I, I thought it was a really fun battle but I just, I loved like the edge of the game and it lost it a little bit at the end and kind of went for friendship is magic and power and I was like, ah, you, you really had me for 80 hours. That's, that's a long time and you yeah. lost me a little bit. Um, I will say that I think the game's a bit long. I know that might be redundant saying 100 hours is long, but I think I was I almost addicted to this game for about 60 hours. And then I definitely slowed down a lot where after like Dungeon 8, kind of felt like I was going through the motions. They do have little novelties in each dungeon and the design changes based on the cognition of each person. They're corrupt in different ways, so they can be cruise ships or banks, etc. But um... I know Japanese RPGs are supposed to be long, but 100 hours is a long time. Yes. It's a long time. But um, it's got so much writing and dialogue that it really feels like a long TV show by the end of it. And you're very attached to the repertoire of characters, which are all really fleshed out. And it's a, it's a really, really good game. Great. With a great roster of people, a great story. Personally, for me, I didn't like the ending, but I'm sure... A lot of people really did enjoy it. And for 100 hours, the quality it maintains is really impressive. Like, Jesus Christ. It's it's a really impressive game. And it's a brand new franchise for me. So it was one of my most memorable experiences of this year. Cool. And overall, really good stuff. Great. And I will be looking forward to... Something got announced recently. I think the next Shin Megami Tensei game got announced. And I think because of their success of Persona 5 and... Four well, in Western yeah. markets, yeah. I think they would be bringing Shin Megami Tensei to NA and EU. I wonder if they rename it because that is a daunting name for Western people. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. If, if it has the same level of quality as Persona, then I'm gonna gonna see what it's like. Or you just wait seven years for the next Persona. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised these games take a long time to make because wow. Yeah. Some damn good quality assurance, let's just say that. Yeah, yeah, I can't imagine making... Oh, um, great game. soundtrack. Great mm. soundtrack. Mm -hmm. I love the music. I actually listen to the OST, and I never do that with video games. Cool. I love the soundtrack for Persona 5. Excellent. It's good stuff. Well, speaking of long-ass video games, my number four is Divinity Original Sin 2. Yeah, cool. Which is a long-ass video game. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you beaten it? Nope. How far in are you? Uh, 55 hours. I've okay. probably got like... I haven't really played much in the last month because it's been busy with other things. Uh, but I'm going to get back to it. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'll... I, I'll probably just rush to the end and finish it because it's been too long that I've like forgotten what was happening in a lot of ways. Mm. But um, it's probably like 70 hours to finish once. Okay. And then I, I do want to start it again with a different character and, and experiment more with it. Um, so yeah, Divinity Original Sin 2 is a uh, a really, really gigantic, sprawling, systems-heavy, role-playing-ass role-playing game <laughs> um, mm. with... I, 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 I had tried to get into the first game and played enough to be like, yeah, this is cool. Um, but for whatever reason, it just didn't click with me. Um, but the second game, I knew I really wanted to give it a proper try. And I'm glad I did because it's, uh, it's a pretty excellent thing. Like, it's got really good turn-based combat. Especially, like, really elementally driven turn-based combat. With, like, the, the variety of ways you can deal with an encounter. The, the variety of spells and, and, like, what would you call that? Like different character types i suppose you know like necromancers and pyromancers and all that yeah there's a lot 
the number of spells in that game is insane. The number of different builds you could have is uh, like probably innumerable. And um, <clears throat> the combat's really cool. The I really like the sort of Diablo aspects of it, where it's like you know you're getting better loot all the time. Uh, finding the numbers go up is you know uh, it's something I'm all right with. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then I think in addition to all those things, it's got a it's got a neat world in some regards, but it's also the part that really I think helps it all come together is that it's really well written, and it's all. <laughs> literally everything in that game is voiced which is insane yeah wow like i i don't even know how you know the 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 writing aspect of it was what probably surprised me the most um mm. it's you know the main plot is a, a fantasy plot it's it's not super interesting but uh, there's a lot of like really funny writing in this game there's a lot of decent sort of dramatic writing um it it's it really reminds me in a lot of ways of like uh, of something like Skyrim or, or not, maybe not Skyrim, but more like a fallout where it's, it's got a lot of personality in its writing. Yeah. Not that I necessarily think that anymore about fallout, but you know what I mean? Like and three and new Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like there's lots of personality and character and lots of funny stuff in it. And, um, it's, it's overwhelming in a lot of ways and i'm fine yeah. with that and um and yeah i i like i almost don't even want to bother finishing it because i feel like i'm just going to play it all again with a, with a different character and experiment a lot more with it um it's in terms of just like freedom in an rpg and also role-playing potential for an rpg which i think is something that rpgs forget about a lot of the times where it's like yeah, you have a skill tree. That means it's an RPG, but it's like, you know, like you look at AC Origins and it's like, yeah, this is technically an RPG, but like, eh, you know, you're not yeah. doing a whole lot of role playing. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I got you. That the freedom and role playing aspects of Divinity are unbelievable. Like the 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 the, the, the number of ways you can solve problems and quests and the lack of hand holding and the just complete freedom of it is uh, really amazing and it all holds together like perfectly like I, I I know it can be a bit of a buggy mess at times which I think has been it's been patched to high heavens um, but I never encountered any of those problems and it's um, it's got a great sense of sort of fun and adventure and your crew is pretty good and the writing is great and the gameplay is great and the freedom is uh, like mind mind-boggling a little bit and um i'm constantly discovering new things like there I, I definitely did sort of the persona thing where it's like i have no idea how to complete this quest like i need a little hint here uh because yeah. there's not there aren't really like objectives for the most part it's sort of just like here's a description of the quest you know figure it out yourself and I, like almost every time i would go to google and be like what how, what am i missing here there would be like six or eight suggestions on how to solve one of these problems. And it was always something different and surprising. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's sort of like prey, but seven trillion times bigger. Damn. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I actually beat crazy. the first level and it took me two hours. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's <laughs> it took me two hours to get off that ship. I, I will say, I wish, th I think that the lowest difficulty is too easy and the, the normal difficulty is a little too hard. But I think by a second playthrough, I'll be, you know, much more acclimated to and, and like forced to really think about each combat encounter more, which I'm looking forward to. But um, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, over it's like persona really like I, I i look at that game you know i look at persona and be like oh this sounds just exhausting and i would imagine that if you don't know divinity you would look at it and be like oh god this seems like completely impenetrable and overwhelming and um i think i, I didn't find the first two hours too bad no no i think it's sort of like the witcher 3 where it's like oh god this game is so huge and it, that part of it is overwhelming same with yeah. Persona. 
But uh, yeah, I think each all the individual elements of divinity are actually really familiar and approachable. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's a heck of a game. Uh, and I, 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 I'm glad I gave it a proper try. I was hoping that I would like it. I did not think it would be this good. Uh, and this, cool. di- this, you know, hit hit me in the way that it did. So. Uh, yeah, I, if you're looking for a hardcore ass computer role playing game, boy, is Divinity your thing? Yeah, it, it really clicked with me. So, Neat. that's it. That means we're All in right. the top three now. We dun, are. Dun, dun. All right, number three. This is the biggest surprise of the year for me. I thought this game was going to be something that I play and forget about and no one else was going to play. It's The Evil Within 2. Mm-hmm. I absolutely loved The <laughs> Evil Within 2. And at the beginning of this video, I think uh, I specifically said some of these games are going to be higher than games that we know are strictly better mm-hmm. than them. And The Evil Within 2 is the best example of that. (laughs) Where I know it has a lot of rough edges. But I don't know what it was about my mind frame and my mood at the time. But I just had a blast with this game. And I understand the complaints and shortcomings of The Evil Within 2. But I don't know what it was about it. I just glided through it in like two, three sessions. And had a blast the whole way through without any hitches. I think there was one section where it goes into first person for like 10 minutes and I didn't understand that and I didn't enjoy it. But apart from that, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, We have reviewed this game also. Yeah. We're going to some depth about how it plays. That will be in the description, but I enjoyed the open world format, which was a surprise. I think it was the best part of the game. Uh, And towards the end of the game, it really takes that away from the player which I think will be a problem for some people because the last four hours, maybe that's too much, but the the last chunk of the game, the open world stuff kind of disappears and it goes strictly narrative, reasonably linear action stuff. And I I still enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the, the story stuff. I enjoyed the boss fights. I think the shooting felt really good for me because I played... The original on the ps4 <laughs> and playing the new one on a mouse and keyboard felt so good yeah i've never i don't think i've ever played a survival game on a pc and feeling competent at shooting is a new thing <laughs> for me in a survival game and i just had this confidence which i don't usually have in survival games and some people might be like that's a detriment to the format you're supposed to feel impaired and in danger but Fuck that, man. I felt cool. I was good at the game and it felt fun to be confident against zombies. And I don't know. I just really, really enjoyed the game. Obviously, there's more details in our review about specifics. But but yeah, I uh, I like the new format of the game. I think it did a good job with the design. Uh, I like the story as well. Uh, The first game had a very nonsensical, bizarre story, which didn't really make any sense. And I needed to watch a YouTube recap to describe to me what just happened. I would still say elements of that are true in this game. Yeah, but for me, I I understood what was happening. It Mm -hmm. it really wrapped things up nicely at the end. I came away satisfied. And I just think it's strangely good. Yeah, I would agree. (laughs) Like, we talked about it on the podcast, and I said it's probably better than it has any right to be. (laughs) Yeah. And, yeah. It's... Bizarre that it got made in the first <laughs> yes, place. Yes, definitely. And I can't believe how improved it is over the first one. It, it will have been the greatest surprise of the year for me. Great. I thought it was going to be another cult classic, weird mm. horror survival game that only I liked. And it's a game that I would I would recommend for most people. Mm. Even, even if you don't like horror or survival horror, it treads this like thin line of being quite comfortable for most people to jump into. I think. Yeah, it's not um, like a super spooky game as well. It's, it's yeah, pretty approachable. I, from that I think it has fun design, fun enemies, uh, and the open world or open map format really adds a lot to the formula. And I would like to see a lot more survival games take on that approach. I think it's neat. Yeah, I agree. Definitely, the open world stuff was uh, was a really cool thing, and I, I hope more. I would love to see more horror sort of deal with 
move away from like hyperlinear and and move mm-hmm. towards a more f- open-ended structure would be really cool yeah 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 great well i'm just gonna say one thing i hope you made the right choices for your top two well we'll see because mm-hmm. i know what they are <laughs> it's just a matter of order and i you know just saying there's Reese? a right order and there's a wrong order <laughs> <laughs> you, you know I like my indies, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay, your number three is my it? number three is my secret game. Yeah, what the hell is this? It's a little game that technically didn't even come out this year, but I don't fucking care. It came out at the end of December of last year, and then got a really big update that basically finished it in March, and I only played it in July. It's a little game okay. called One Shot. Never heard of it. No, I didn't. I, I know you didn't. Um, one shot. So it's a little um, adventure oh. game. Um, it's just fun. It is. I would. Oh god, I don't even want to say that out loud. Uh, it is sort what? of like Undertale. Oh, <laughs> it does look like Undertale. Uh, I'm not going to say much about this game because I think it is a real gem, and I. You, it should be played with as little knowledge as possible. I think I remember you talking about this. Actually. I did, actually. Very I did briefly, talk about it yeah. once. Um, Completely slipped my mind. It's... So, yeah, it's an adventure game. Um, <laughs> and, and I did have to actually... Speaking of guides for other games, I did have to look at a, a guide once or twice on Steam because it's... You know, adventure game logic is a little uh, finicky sometimes. And, and this game <laughs> sometimes... Sorry. What? The the developer is called Little Cat Feet. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Everything about this game, you know, you look at it and you're like, oh boy. Um, <laughs> and I agree. And I, when I looked at it, I was like, I, I, I saw it on a list somewhere of like, this, this is a really cool little indie, you know, list of Steam games that are cheap and you should play. And I was like, okay, I'll play this. And um, so the cool things about One Shot are that it, it's one of those games like Pony Island and Undertale where it breaks the fourth wall very regularly mm-hmm. and is very, um, you know, full of meta fourth wall breaking stuff. Um, and I don't want to say what those what that consists of, but unlike those other games where it uses that to be like, oh, it's a video game. Wow. <laughs> We're so goofy. Um, this this breaks the fourth wall to create a sense of uh, responsibility and mm. a care for the world and the main character uh, in a way that I hadn't experienced before. Uh, you the game knows like that you are playing it basically, and that it it knows that it is a world that exists inside of your computer and it plays with that in some really interesting ways and it creates a relationship between the player and the character that is wholly unique uh, and that I haven't seen done before in a game. And there are many parts of it and, you know, it's like sort of gimmicky, but um, and I, there are parts of it where it's breaking the fourth wall in ways that felt like magic. <laughs> what? Um, and I don't want to say what they were because it's, you know, it's it's like six hours. It's got a sort of a second playthrough like near where you play it again. And it's initially the same. And, then and turns... Undertale. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. And I just didn't want to mention. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, you play it again and it's initially the same and then turns out to be, you know, completely different and, and basically wraps it up. Um, I had to do extensive work to make it so that I could play to capture some footage of it because when you beat that game uh you basically are meant to uninstall it and never play it ever again because uh it it won't let you start a new game and i had to like go into offline mode and like delete many different files and wow. trick it into starting a new game um That's it's it's well written you know it's sort of it sort of is going for that cute writing style which can be very hit or miss but i think it it treads the line well. It's it's not like super cutesy, but it's sort of charming. And um, your goal is you have a light bulb and you're trying to put the light bulb back at the top of a tower because the light bulb is the sun for this world. And <laughs> okay, and that's your goal. And um, I went into it not expecting anything at all. And 
ended up being like completely enraptured by it and it was like six seven hours and like utterly surprising and creative uh and uh yeah it, it was i don't want to really say much more about it because i think it needs to be played uh and you'll understand to some degree what i mean by what it's doing with the fourth wall breaking but the it keeps surprising throughout in the ways in which it is aware of itself uh and i don't want to say any more man an early access game and a 2016 game you've gone off the rails this yeah year, whatever it released december 6th <laughs> and then got a huge update that basically added the second half of the game in march so eh, okay. close enough close enough i agree um, but yeah so our, our lists it's our list we can do what we want halo 3 is our number one spoilers um, <laughs> But yeah, one shot. It's it's uh, like ten bucks on Steam normally. It'll probably be like two dollars during the Steam sale. Um, you should play it, and you should play it in windowed mode, like they suggest, because. Uh, okay. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an interesting. Uh, yeah. Huh. I don't really know what else to say aside from it should be played, and that parts of it felt like black magic. Uh, and do the way. characters jump out the window? I'm not going to say anything. If they do that, I'd shit myself. <laughs> you you should play one magic. shot because there's some pretty cool stuff in it. Okay. Yeah. So that's mm. it. It uh, kind of blew my mind a little bit. So good job to cool. the two people that made this game because you did a, you made a really neat little thing and it was very affecting. And uh, yeah. Hmm. So there you go. Well, I think that is going to transition nicely into my number two mm -hmm. you'll be relieved to know good good that my number two is what remains of edith finch fantastic i think this is one of the most creative uses of the format of video games i've ever seen in my life yeah and i think it has the best level of the entire year <laughs> yeah i well. would agree i would agree yeah um, the, the walking simulator genre has been a little bit controversial mm -hmm. with people saying that it's lazy and sometimes not really a game. And this is the king. This is the king of that genre. It is the best game that has ever come out of that type of format where you're just walking around ex experiencing an environment usually attached to a narrative. I'm going to try and break down what remains... Uh, I mean, without spoiling too much, it's a walking simulator with uh, vignettes of yes. story and gameplay. I would say. So the the premise is you are the last member of your family alive, and you are going through your old family home and learning about the past, which pretty much entails every way your family members died. Yeah, you like that is replay the death sequence of all your family members yes sort of and it's like magical realism uh, there was actually a really neat moment of discovery for me in, mm. the, in the game where uh the very opening is just you in a forest and you're approaching the house and you can open up a notebook a journal which is also the menu but within the journal you can actually find the family tree right and just just through observation I was just looking through and I noticed that everyone was dead. <laughs> I was like, she is the only person who has like born this date and then just a dash without, you right. know, without rip. <laughs> yeah. And I started just casually looking through the list going, okay, that, that sucks. Wait a minute. Like 1982 to 1984. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like 1991 to 1996. Jesus Christ. And I just went through this list. I was like, oh my God. One of those is like horrible. 1999 to 1999. <laughs> oh my, yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. These must be the worst parents of all time. <laughs> but uh, I really like the way the game is laid out. You are exploring this house and they did a great job uh, at designing the house. Mm -hmm. It's very detailed and it has that gone home-esque feel where you're snooping around and a place which you feel like you shouldn't be snooping around in and it has this very whimsical design it reminds me i don't know if you've watched harry potter in a long time but it reminds sure, me yeah. of the weasley's house Definitely. the borough which is all staggered and held together with magic and it looks 
really strange. And that is the, the, the design of this house. There is some actual backstory to that because one of the great grand, grandfathers was a, was a builder. But as you progress through the house, you stumble upon memories. Um, because your grandma has very bizarrely sealed away these rooms. Uh, there's actually some very bizarre undertones to the grandma in the story, which I won't dive too deep into. It doesn't lay out in black and white, but it, it, I've seen some videos on YouTube of people looking into it. And there's just some very strange undertones with her actions. I think the first vignette in the whole game, you are a small girl and she's locked her in her room without feeding her for the night. Yeah. And it, it's just very strange. And there's some behavior with the old lady... Which is just, I don't know. Well, it definitely it treads some... the line. Like I said, it's magical realism. So it's like, you know, you don't necessarily know what like what actually happened in a lot of these cases. Mm -hmm. Or like whether or not it, it really went down this way. Um, but that's part of its, you know, that's part of its charm. And, and, and yeah. by sort of taking a, a magical approach to a really dark subject, it makes it all a lot more pleasant. Like it, mm -hmm. and it deals with life and death in some pretty, in, in a way that's like, it's uplifting and funny at times, and also like yeah. a real, really depressing as well, which I think is a really accurate of of you know when people die, it's it, yeah it, there can be great humor to come out of it and and also misery you know it's uh, yeah before I before I dive into the vignettes which are obviously the star of the show yes. Just, just to summarize the the arcing narrative, there's a lot of stuff not filled in, which I think was a really clever way of doing it. Like I said, the, there's some weird stuff with the grandma. There's a, a conflict where you, your mum is very upset with her, and you don't really understand why. Your mum almost comes off as a villain because you're like, why are you upset at this old lady? And then you realize as you as you progress through the house that there's some weird stuff. Like she's sealed up all the rooms, and she's very engage with the idea of there being a curse on the family yes. instead of just maybe accepting that you aren't a very good parent <laughs> and you're letting your children do stupid things there's some nice undertones to the game which are which is there to be read into and not painted in black and white but onto the vignettes so as you go around the house you stumble upon something which uh, belonged to a past family member and then you find out how they died and each one of these stories, there's, I think there's about 10 or so. There's quite yeah, a lot probably. of them. Yeah. A lot of your family's dead. It's yes. like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Each one is presented in a completely different fashion. And the ways they vary up this and the creative uses of just playing a video game was what really, really impressed me the most. I think the first... They actually start off strangely with one of the weakest ones, in my opinion, where you are playing a girl <laughs> who yeah. turns into a shark, then an octopus. And I've seen people online theorize that she ate the berries, if you remember, and that yeah, made yeah. her go a bit loopy. But I don't think it was a very strong way to start the game because it comes off as a little bit um, cryptic. Not cryptic. Um, abstract. Sure, sure. When yes. I don't think a lot of the game is. No, I, I don't think not. it starts yeah. the game off very strong. Yeah. They, but some, those, of the, some of those vignettes are amazing. Absolutely incredible. Even yeah. I think the, the first one... Yeah, go ahead. I think the first one that stands out is when you stumble upon... I can't remember how the family is tied together. Maybe your aunt. I can't remember. But she was a famous child actress. <laughs> and she was, yes. she was murdered. Oh my god, that one and is so good. And the, the way you... The way this story is unraveled is through a comic book, a Halloween comic book, which yeah. is based on the rumoured story behind how she was killed. And it's just published by a comic book factory because she was a famous kid and people obviously found that interesting. People like murder stories. Mm. And you go, you dive inside the comic and as the comic is flipping through, <laughs> you play the panels yeah also they straight up are using the halloween music from the halloween movie yeah yeah it's hard to describe in words maybe i'll record that section so i don't dive too deep into spoilers when i record this game or you record this game i, I don't probably know. will yeah I, I actually look forward to replaying it i'll probably because mm -hmm. i i did play it and i played it in one sitting and and, and i quite Me liked too. it and uh it, it didn't really like have a profound impact on me but i i really appreciated it and uh the vignettes are all like some of them are a little short like 
you know, a yes. couple of them are kind of like, okay, that nothing was there, but the, the swinging and the the Halloween and the fish and the the um, what was that other one? The uh, I just had it on my head. Frig. I'm not sure. There was one more that really stood out, and I've just forgotten it. But they were all. Uh, oh, the well, baby. No, no. Oh right, okay. <laughs> yeah. They're the really the good vignettes are so good. Yeah, like um, I, I, we have to clarify that there is a sequence in the game where you you play a baby drowning in a bathtub. Yes, but which it's sounds delightful. Like, <laughs> yeah, which like, doesn't make sense. They captured the it's, pure bliss that baby experienced in a way that yeah, is really effective. Yeah, it's like effective. this magical ignorance yes. that just looks so great to be a part that of. That baby died so happy. Like, yes. it was having such a good time. Like, imagine being a game developer and you decide to make the player watch or be a baby drowning in a bathtub. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And is. Like, I was scared coming to, into this review because I knew at one point I would have to say that it was a wonderful scene. And for yeah. people who haven't played the game, that sounds very morbid. But you you have to play it. Yes. Because yeah. I highly I highly advise this game. But It's only two hours probably as well. Yeah. Like, the level which yeah. boosted this game up all the way to number two. It, it, without this level, it might not have even made my list. Mm. Maybe, very, maybe a bit lower down, maybe 10 or 9. The cannery level is one of the best levels in any video game I've ever played because it portrays this very specific feeling and emotion that I can relate to on a very strong level. So the way the cannery level works, it, it is spoilers, but I have to describe this to really yeah. explain why it's so high up on my list. The way the cannery level works is you start off as a guy who was working in a fish factory, he is grabbing dead fish and he is cutting the heads of those fish and then just chucking it in a pile. It's a very repetitive task and you are performing it yourself with the mouse. You are grabbing the fish, dragging it over to a guillotine and then launching it into a pile and you are doing it over and over. But it gets interesting when the character starts to daydream and in the top left hand corner of the screen, a little knight appears in armor and you can control him with WASD. So you are essentially playing a man who is working at a boring job and is daydreaming and you are controlling both aspects. You're playing of this two encounter. games at the same time. Yes. Yeah. And the reason this was like so profound to me is because I worked at a supermarket mm -hmm. behind a till for three years in my adolescent years. And I understand this feeling so, so well. I don't know if anyone's worked on a modern till. Like, they barely need humans. Like, yeah. we have self-checkout now already. It, it's surprising that they still employ people. But it got to the point where I could do it so easily and with so little brain power yeah. and just my muscle memory. I remember there was one time where I was scanning food and I was so I was so far away in my own head just thinking about the weekend or just anything else yeah. that I I don't know if you have this in North America but over here to, to separate people's shoppings we simply just put like a big old piece of plastic yeah, it's like yeah. a border yeah. and while I was working I just picked this up and I I scanned that piece of plastic <laughs> and then started scanning the next person's food and they had to be like hey hey hey, 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 hey. That, that's, that's not mine and I was like oh I'm, I'm so sorry <laughs> zoned out I, I'm yeah. I was just on this. I was like, I was, I was miles away. And this scene in Edith Finch perfectly portrays that emotion that I used to have when I worked for three years in that, in that supermarket where you don't really need to even see what you're doing anymore because by the time the game... But by the time the sequence evolves so the daydream is starting to spread and take over the, the uh, screen, you have done the, uh, the fish chopping the guillotine stuff so many times that your hand knows how to do it without really being able to see it anymore and it's oh it's so it's so good and it goes on for so long also i really want to play that full game on the right hand side it looked <laughs> really cool <laughs> had an amazing it gets art style more and more like convoluted where the the daydream gets more complicated yeah. a story a narration appears and, and it's reflected like, in the game. That is... The actual fish chopping gets integrated into the gameplay yeah. where you're opening doors by chopping the fish's head off. And it's just so creative. Yes. I just, I was just blown away by how much I related to the scene and just how, 
I, I'm trying to think of a, a better adjective than creative because I keep saying it over and over. Well, it's I mean but, it's it's it, it's capturing like something really complicated and, mm -hmm. and and but it's doing it effortlessly where it's like it's the the fact and that with such like confidence. <laughs> I was going to say with such charm, like it's such oh, a fun oh, yeah, yeah. scene. Because it's also like a very sad scene as well. Oh um, yeah, because obviously, spoiler, the guy dies. That's yeah, what all the and, vignettes are. Yeah, and um, but like the fact that they're able to make a level in a game that is simultaneously capturing monotony and creativity and doing it <laughs> with two different games on the screen playing at the same time uh, is... It's... While relating to like a monotonous task that a lot of people oh, can yeah. relate to. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think it's just a real accomplishment of the medium. Just yes. being able to use video games to portray that is so, so impressive to me. Yeah, I, I and agree. I, I've been thinking about it all year. That one level, I think, is a masterpiece in game design, and I think they should be very proud yeah. of that level. I think it's it's amazing. I agree. And I don't think I'm going to say any more because it's only two hours, and I think that people should pick it up. Maybe wait for a sale or something because I think the base price is quite pricey for a two-hour game and a lot of people like to be like i want this amount of time per hour for my investment so i understand that people don't want to dive into a little walking simulator narrative thing for like 20 bucks but if it's on sale i highly recommend this game it tells a really nice story has a lot of character to it and has some incredible game design and i think that's all i want to say yeah because like with like with one shot you just want to leave some to the people who haven't played it yet, which Definitely. I think is going to be a lot of people. It's it's a it's a very very neat thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, it came out on my birthday. Huh. Yeah, I think it also helps that I dived into it completely blind. Yes, that always helps a fresh experience when you have no expectations and it surpasses them tenfold. Absolutely, yeah. And it was the best indie experience for me this year. Massive surprise, and I was blown away by its creativity. Um, wonderful. I, I like that. loved it. I like that my number three and your number two lined up really well like that. They, uh, yeah. They sort of complement each other well. Yeah. They do. It's cool that indie games can be so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, these little gems, you know, people just doing what they want and uh, being very, very creative uh, with with what games are capable of. And um, yeah. I've actually seen um, Edith Finch pop up on a few award shows and getting some Game yeah, of the Year got, nominations um, and such. Best narrative at the Game Awards, I think. Yeah. It's Which cool. I really like cool. that it's getting some praise. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, All right. my number two, um, if you watch the review, it's probably pretty obvious. My number two <laughs> is Wolfenstein 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The New Colossus. Wolfenstein 2, we've talked about We did a long chat about it. Um, mm -hmm. I understand all the complaints about the gameplay but i i have a just a grand old time playing wolfenstein um yeah i have a great time playing it I, I think it's a fun chaotic messy shooter in a way that i really enjoy um and so that that propels it certainly that helps but the uh the storytelling well not the storytelling it's more like the writing and the character work in this game is so good um mm -hmm. and it it delivers on the promise that the first game sort of set up where it's like yeah we've got crazy characters but it's sort of you know we're keeping it fairly tame um it delivers on the proposal of crazy in a way that i uh, really didn't expect and then but it, it doesn't do crazy as a gimmick um it's like so integrated into the identity of that game uh and then it's also counteracted by like some of the best genuine like dramatic human writing I've ever seen in a game and there are many great incredible moments in the game I, I, I really do actually think the best moment in the whole game is when you are talking to your mother in the midpoint which if you oh, yeah. play that game you'll know what I'm talking about and I, I think that is like uh, like a bit of an exceptional, an exceptional uh, sort of shining bright light moment for game story, like character work, uh, and I, I, even though that sort of applies to many many aspects of the game, I don't really have much to say. Uh, it's it's 
I was extraordinarily excited for it. I had high expectations for the writing and character work, and those expectations were vastly uh, overshot by, by what Wolfenstein 2 delivered. And I, like The Evil Within 2, I would say thank you, Bethesda. I don't know, you know, <laughs> man, you probably aren't, you're probably losing money on these games, but boy. Am I glad it exists because uh, I'm all about, I love me, my narrative. Um, thankfully, I think Wolfenstein 2 is not just a narrative fun, narratively fun. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's the best story or the best writing and character work I've seen in the game since The Last of Us. And I think in it is as good as that, I would say, even though they're doing very yeah, different it, it's, things. It's the best game this year for characters I yes think. yeah and i would say the best game for characters in a long time and uh yeah i i was so blown away by parts of it um and yeah it's it's i love it i love wolfenstein too and if we never get a third one like it'll break my heart but i will be pretty content with what wolfenstein 2 delivered uh, so yeah that's we don't need to talk anymore about it it's i love it it's amazing. Yeah, I I felt bad about not putting it on my list because, as I said, it is an achievement of character writing yeah. and voice acting. God, it's so good. Yeah. But um, if you've seen the review, you know that it just didn't click with me and I didn't enjoy playing it. Yeah. And, like, I can't... I just couldn't justify putting a game on my list which I didn't enjoy playing it's games of the year, not movies of the year. So unfortunately, that's why I like didn't put Hellblade on because uh, yeah. I, I think Hellblade actually, like the combat and puzzles are actually good. They're just poorly paced out and and yeah. When I look back, like probably like you with Wolfenstein 2, it's like I don't ever want to play Hellblade again. But I love <laughs> the story stuff and the, and it's yeah. an achievement. But uh, so yeah, that's number two and. Everyone knows by now. You can figure it out. You can call it. We have a shared number one game of the year, just like last year. Yeah, just like last year. It's objectively and the best game of the year, and you're wrong it, if you think yes. otherwise. <laughs> yeah, shut up about Zelda. Doesn't even come close. God damn it, people. Horizon Zero Dawn is a masterpiece, and it's by far, by far, the best game this year. was almost the redeeming factor for the AAA industry. Like, there's been yeah. a lot of yeah. E3s in the past where games get shown and they're downgraded or they just don't come to fruition. They just don't, they deliver don't deliver on that initial exciting promise. There's, there's been a lot of things in the past, like Watch Dogs jumps to mind of, like, here's some new yeah. tech, here's some something you haven't seen before, and then the game comes out and it's, it's, it's fine. You know, oh. most AAA games are, are fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm being broad Yes, here. yes, yes. Let's, yes. Not get, let's not get to Watch Dogs. I'm being broad. But, like, you know, sometimes a game comes out. Like, um, I, had an, I had another example. I haven't actually played it, so I feel really rude saying this, but, like, Quantum... Quantum Break? Quantum Break. That was a game which I thought was going to change the world. And then people were like, it's good. It's a, it's a solid yeah. game. Yeah, I like Quantum but, Break. But I've I've got to this point where when I see promise, yes, I expect a solid seven point five E3 as an end result. Has been full of classic. It's too good to be true moments. Yes, Horizon is not one of those moments. I can't think of a single game where I think it looked too good to be true, and it was better than <laughs> yes. what I thought it could be. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I think we talked about Horizon a lot. We have. Um, we went over the basics of what we like about it when we talked about Frozen Wilds, 
and in the um, review. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass it over to you. Okay. I'm going to pass you over to take the lead on this because even though I adore Horizon, I think you actually like it a little bit more than me. Maybe, yeah. Which is a lot. Um, Which is a lot. <laughs> yeah, like before release, you know, I was... Horizon was definitely like most excited for game uh, of the last few years. You know, when it was announced, yeah. it was like, wow, this looks like it's completely new and fresh and it looks amazing. And going into it, like, I was extraordinarily excited, but I did not, I was not anticipating, what I was excited for was, like, just something new. I, I was <laughs> not expecting great storytelling or exceptional gameplay. I think Guerrilla, um, you know, their technical art, like, truly accomplished on a technical end, and I think they know how to make a good game. Um, but and I expected Horizon Zero Dawn to be like ah the story's fine and the gameplay is solid, but the appeal of it is this new and fresh world. What surprised me was the fact that it's actually the best playing game of the year, um, mm -hmm. and has some of the best writing uh, in a game in a long time. Uh, I think it has maybe the best sci-fi world building in video games yeah who knows like uh, there's a lot of games out there but um mm, you know i'm it, gonna i know people will like yeah. mass effect or something but uh, <gasps> don't I, don't I touch my mass it. effect <laughs> <laughs> no anyway, yeah so the world building and science science fiction writing uh, in the game is really, really exceptional. Um, yeah, and I think the biggest surprise of the package as well. Yes, definitely. Um, I, I I don't play games for very long periods of time anymore. Um, I mm -hmm. find them very. I find it very hard to play a game for more than like two hours in in a, in a session, and then I'll take you know an hour or two and come back to it, maybe, or just come back to it the next day. Um, Horizon, like, it was like The Witcher, where it just consumed me, and I just wanted to keep playing it. Um, I, I played, like, 10 hours of it in the first, like, 14 hours that it was out. Like, yeah. <laughs> but good pacing. It is, yeah, yeah. And so, like, that already, that that alone is, is says a lot about the game, where it's like, it, it hooked me more than any other game this year. Um... But like I, I can't stress enough that this is it's maybe the most complete package of a game we've had since The Witcher Three. But like even The Witcher Three, yeah. like gameplay wise, has some problems. Yeah, I or, think or most AAA failings. games. There's lots of games of which nail certain things. Yeah, yeah. But it's quite easy to be negative about a lot of games and be like, well, it's weak in this area. Yes. And man, you'd have a hard time tearing a Horizon Zero Dawn apart because it doesn't really have a weakness. Like the only real weakness I would say is like, oh, the side quests, like they're fine to good, you know, like some of them yeah. are, some of them are a little boring. And I would say some of the facial like animations are like, you know, a little stiff, but like they never bothered <laughs> me. Um, but I, Horizon is, I think, the best-looking game of the year by a country mile. Ooh, yeah. Um, it sold me on a, on why I, like, if you want something, if you want a game that says, here's why you should buy a 4K HDR OLED TV with a PlayStation 4 Pro, uh, Horizon is that game. I think mm -hmm. it, it, it's it got just, good. like, an absolutely incredible look to it. Um, I think it's got a great soundtrack. Uh, there's like really some really wonderful ambient music in that game that I really like. It sort of stops me in my tracks sometimes, where it's, especially in the early zones, where it's like, wow, this is a great piece of music. Um, yeah. The combat, like we said, the, the combat is the best combat of the year, I think. It's yeah frantic and stressful and challenging in a way that uh, I never expected it to be. I think the the robots, when they were first shown, they they really looked like something that was a tech demo, of like here's an engine and this is what could possibly happen. Yeah. And then behind the scenes, it's running it's on, on something that no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's running on a system that no one can afford, and it took like fifty people a hundred days to make. Yeah. Well, like when the um, what what are the giant T Rex creatures called again? I've forgotten. Uh, Thunderjaw. When the Thunderjaw right? in that first demo, like. 
when she like is trying to tie it down and it breaks through the huge boulder like rock formation and that shatters yeah. and then she shoots off the gun you're like yeah this looks amazing but this is never gonna it's never gonna be like the oh no it turns out it's exactly like that and there's lots of them as well yeah there's, there's a, like there's 20? a good catalog of robots yeah yeah i think it's an accomplishment of animation i think they're intricate and they look incredible and they never get boring to fight no definitely not there, no, uh, even like maybe you could say the watchers after a while because you just sure, shoot them in yeah. the eyes. Yeah. But apart from that, like the size of some of these things and just it never gets boring. No, like I was capturing footage um, and I'm in a new game plus playthrough. And I'm almost at 90 hours played in Horizon across yeah. the two playthroughs. And I was fighting, it was the quest leading up to Red Mob where you have to fight a Thunderjaw and then a Stormbird. And those two yes. fights were uh, like, and I, I've been playing, you know, I, I'm back and acclimated to the controls and know how to play that game and it's easy in other places but those fi- like those fights never are not when it's over you go yes. like whoo jesus that was stressful so good. um and that's exciting like i i don't yeah. feel that way when i am engaging in combat ever really in games there's also a, a really nice uh, learning curve to each robot's weakness and yeah. there's a satisfaction uh, from when you first tackle a, a giant rock breaker yeah. or a behemoth and you feel like you barely scraped by and you got <laughs> lucky and then 20 hours later you feel like you've mastered it and you could take on a herd of them because you know exactly how to take them down and the game can obviously just give you the weaknesses but I found it quite fun to just experiment and see what worked best mm-hmm. and I just loved feeling like a more competent hunter as the game went on it was extremely satisfying and the uh there's like great variety in the weapons and freedom like they all work like i know you used very different weapons like have different weapon preferences than i do and Mm -hmm. and that's really cool there's what probably a dozen different weapons uh Mm. and there's a like a really good progression i I didn't think there would be so many weapons in the game especially now with the dlc that adds a few more um yeah, the, the minor RPG elements in the game are, are really well fleshed out and simple to learn. Yeah, and then the best... Well, uh, actually, before we just touch on the story, I'll say that I um, I get that people like you know, something like Zelda because it's the, the world is full of things to find uh, you know, yeah. and interact with. I really like Horizon's world because it's kind of quiet and empty. Um, hmm. There's really actually not that much on the map like once you turn off all the campfires and um symbols that show like here are where these types of animals are um you realize that there's actually not a crazy amount of stuff in that game to to explore it's not like a ubisoft game where there's a trillion icons of things to do and i i really have enjoyed and i've done it a lot i i enjoy just like loading that game up and just wandering around and just sort of yeah. Looking at the world, sometimes there's some neat things to find visually, like this the wind farm. That's sort of that thing looks really, you know, and they're like, oh, here's yeah, a yeah, school yeah. bus half sunken into the ground. And uh, there's a, a quietness to that world that I think really suits the world and is something that I really like in games. Uh, I mentioned it with Prey, and, and SteamWorld is sort of the same thing where it's like, it's sort of quiet and lonely, and I like that. Um, mm. It's, it's, specific but uh it's something that i like quite a bit and then um the main science fiction plot is the best part of it uh it's it's unbelievable there's a lot of almost, story in the game like it's i think that is the most shocking thing to me because oh God, when i yeah. when i when i think back to how detailed and how deep the sci-fi elements of the horizon story went yeah it feels like something that you would find in a smaller indie title because sometimes doing very detailed and complicated science fiction is off-putting to a general audience and stuff and that you don't really see in triple a games because you know there's a sub not nerdy culture who really likes deep sophisticated sci-fi but it's not for everyone and boy like horizon is complicated like the depth into ai it goes is is sophisticated if you don't know what's going on it might be very confusing and i think in horizon they could have got away 
with just having you in the world fighting these robots and they could just have a simple villain of the week thing or they could just have you saving the world with a simple narrative and it still would have been fantastic. And it still the fact has that these those two elements as well. Yeah. yeah, but the fact that these two forces came together, it's just something you don't see in one package very often. It feels like these two things would be found in different places. Yes, yeah. I never would have expected a game like this to have had such a compelling history of like an explanation to like why are there robot dinosaurs you know yeah i, I and i remember being like some of those cutscenes. Uh, first of all like the main science fiction history plot goes for a long time like it's it, it, it's much more in-depth than i ever thought and 100 percent. they propose they like pose so many questions in that when you're in that first dungeon you go into when you're a kid and I'm like, oh, they're going to answer like three of these. And then it's like, no, no, we're going to answer all of them two hours later. And then we're going to ask yeah. like a ton more. And then we're going to answer all those. And we're going to do that like four more times. There were yeah, several a, parts. Great... Go ahead. I was just going to say there's a great pacing to the narrative, which is very compelling and addictive. You're always getting answers at, and at the same time getting more questions. And you just want to keep pushing forward. Yeah. And they answer those questions. Like it wraps up very conclusively and well and mm -hmm. yeah they leave a few little strings hanging uh, after the yeah. credits but uh like alo's aloy's story goes uh some really good places and ends really strongly uh there is there were several times playing through this game for the first time there was that i was thinking like oh god this is going to be like almost the end of the game isn't it oh god like when you go up that Ted Faro Tower and you learn about what Zero Dawn yes. is, I'm like, oh, this has to be like nearly the end of the game. You know, and I'm like 15 hours in. And it was like, nope, nope, this is a 50 hour game, actually. This is only like <laughs> the first of six of the reveals. Um, and yeah, they lean a little too much on, you know, audio logs and, and text entries, but um, I really, I really enjoy those. Like, it's sort of a bad, it's not the greatest form of storytelling, but. I enjoy I enjoy audio logs and I enjoy reading the little text entries that you find in the world. Yeah. They sort of leave it open to your imagination in a way that I enjoy. And um, yeah, there were parts of this story where I was like leaning forward in my chair, like, uh, oh God, this is, oh God, tell me what's happening. You know, when, when you find out what Gaia Prime is and Elizabeth's yeah. whole plot, like her whole plan that whole cutscene is they like go so deep into Gaia as well. Like every yeah. subsection, they explain like everything. There is like, I would be very shocked if someone found a loophole, not a loophole, a um, plot hole, plot hole in Horizon story because they go so deep into everything you could ask about, and yeah. it's all there if you want to learn about it. It's mental. Yeah, like it's the extent to which they tell a great story and then also wrap that story up is really surprising and. Mm -hmm. um, it's so good. It's the most complete yeah. package of the year. And the nicest thing I can say about it is that it's the closest thing to The Witcher 3 that I've played since The Witcher 3. Yeah. Um, and it was long and varied and exciting all the way through and kept me glued to the television. And 80 hours later, it's, it's still fun to play. Yeah. Uh, this, is a, this is a very specific compliment. Uh, but I don't think I mentioned this in our initial review and even the Frozen Wilds review. But I don't think I've ever seen an apocalyptic scenario played out like this. Mm -hmm. I was reading through all the audio logs uh, when I was playing the Frozen Wild, and I forgot how dark some of the stuff is. Oh, yeah. Because when there's um, like apocalyptic stuff, uh, in movies, usually you're at like the ground zero event. You're watching it unfold, or you're in the future when the world's gone to shit. There's there's a very unique scenario in this game where they go through the procedure of telling people that the world is ending, and like it goes into the depths of being like, okay, so your options are this: you can hide in here, or you can you can choose euthanasia. Yeah. And they have these great voice actors who are trying or who are reacting to <laughs> basically being told that the world is ending yeah. and I don't think I've ever seen that in any media that I've seen where it tackles the human emotions of being told that everything is coming to an end and everyone's going to die and it was really 
dark and detailed in a way that I'd never seen before. It tackled some really interesting areas of apocalypse. Yeah, apocalypse fiction often doesn't deal in like the procedural aspects of it a lot of the, you Yeah, know, it's like it's why I, I like Arrival so much where it's just like this is the sciency human part that would be happening. Yeah. yeah. And this game is all about the the scientists trying to save the world and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Arrival is a really good comparison actually. Yeah. Yeah, and it's um it's smart. It's smartly written. It is very depressing at times, um, but it's also like really positive and uplifting, I think. And I said it in the review. It's like, you know, environmentalism and feminism and all these things. Like it does all those things and it does them really, really well and ties yes. them all together really strongly. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of hate how much Horizon is so good because I just don't know when it's going to be. I'm gonna like I don't know when I'm gonna play a game again that's gonna be so exciting, <laughs> like oh, a I triple A game that's like it's so the budget is so huge and it succeeds in so many ways. I I don't know when we're gonna get that. And probably Cyberpunk, yeah. hopefully. Um, it's just it's unusual to get a package from a developer which isn't Naughty Dog. Yes. And for it to nail everything it tries to accomplish. Yeah. And I think Horizon is more ambitious than anything Naughty Dog has ever done. Oh, God, yeah. Because it tries to juggle multiple things that one game will try to achieve just one of those things, and it it just nails multiple positive things which video games strive towards. It shouldn't be this good. I don't know how Guerrilla Games did it. I know, yeah. Uh, We will hopefully get some information because Danny from Noclip is covering it in December. Yeah. Which is going to be very interesting, but I, I think they should be so fucking proud yeah. of what they've done. Especially in a in a dark time of AAA gaming. To just release a single player only game which is almost flawless in its execution of what it's trying to accomplish. And what it's trying to accomplish is incredibly ambitious. Yeah. They spent seven it's, years it's making amazing. it. And it's very clear that they they like they've always known how to make a solid game, but it's it's very clear with this that like they are a group of people that have intense passion and are incredibly creative and and with a single game they were able to skyrocket themselves to the top of the most premier developers out there it's like <laughs> cd project gorilla naughty dog you know like not necessarily maybe not in that order but it's like they're now like part of the elite i would say where it's just like i I cannot wait to see what they do next because they it definitely was a proving for them or it's like we oh yeah have proven to ourselves to the audience and to to Sony you know the our our bosses that like we actually Gorilla we are actually really creative and know how to make a really exceptional game uh, that and people love it like the you know it sold really well it was critically like everyone loved it uh, the fans love it you know it's it's been such a wonderful success story and i never would have thought it would have been this good i know yeah it's crazy how good it is it's it's not as uh, profound of an experience as the witness last year um in that uh, that was like one of the most unique game experiences i've ever had with <laughs> the witness but like this is just when it comes to triple a games i think you got a real high bar to beat now um, it's a beautiful thing it's a gift doesn't have we, should, yeah. we don't deserve it yeah pretty much honestly like uh, <laughs> all these other open world games like assassin's creed and uh shadow of war and all this, it's just like oh i'm so bored with these things but right, horizon right. and you know what's also exciting about horizon it could be it could be even better in a sequel <laughs> like the human combat could be a lot what? better the, that's true the yeah. traversal like the climbing imagine if this had sort of a zelda breath of the wild like free climbing that would be crazy yeah. like there's oh my it's god it's so good but there is also tremendous room for like incredible yeah, expansion. expansion with a sequel yeah um, <gasps> yeah and it's left open as well oh yeah they're definitely going to make a sequel and oh, you know it's going to be boy, boy, probably boy. a ways away but uh i cannot wait to see where they take it and even absolutely you know even if the next game is just more of the same i'll be fine with that because what's there is so good 100 percent. yeah well well not a bad way to end the year yeah eh? too bad well, it end, came end out the in the review. beginning of the year <laughs> yeah so to wrap up the video do you want to do a quick honorary mention section oh sure why not we've already gone this long might as well just keep going 
yeah, we've already mentioned Hellblade. I'm very glad that came up because it's at the top of my honorary mentions. Let me check we my... did a review on it, like most things this year. Yes. And I think it's one of the best indies of the year and one of the most um, ambitious things to tackle. Mental health is a, a rough thing to go after. And they, they did a great job of it. And I think Hellblade has the best use of sound oh God, in yeah. video games this year. Yeah. And it's, it's fun to see people use different aspects of video games in a creative way. Yeah, Hellblade is in a lot of ways a really creative use of the medium. Even though like the game parts of it aren't as great, the like... Yeah. Audio visual experience is incredible and it, it does a lot of like it's probably the most ambitious game of the year and in a lot of ways the most successful on executing those ambitions, you know. Yeah. Like mental I illness. recommend the behind the scenes if you haven't yes. seen it. Really oh yeah, I need to watch that. It's like really long, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's fascinating though. Yeah. Uh, uh quickly for me, mm -hmm. I have Snake Pass yeah. on my list. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I think the thing for me that held back Snake Pass is I just wanted a chilled out platformer. And it, it was very difficult. Very difficult. I was actually getting frustrated with the whole year <laughs> with, with platformers. Because last year we had Ratchet and Clank, oh, which was yeah. so wonderful and comfy. And I hope that franchise continues. And I, that's what I like about platformers. I, they're, they're really comfy. And I don't have a Switch, so I didn't Make get Mario another Odyssey. another Rayman game. Yeah, God damn and, Rayman. It. <laughs> and this year we had Snake Pass. Shit, there's one I'm, I've forgotten about. But we also had... Oh, sorry, Cuphead. Mm -hmm. And we also had the Crash Bandicoot trilogy. Right, which, right. Which some of it was quite easy, but a lot of it was very difficult and frustrating. And I was like, 2017, just give me a chilled out platformer for Christ's sake. And I was so excited for Snake Pass because I thought it was going to be that. And no, it was a brutally difficult physics-based slivery puzzle oh, game but i still really enjoyed snake pass, it you bitch i hate it it's so good <laughs> it's though so hard. it's so great it is good it is what good. a cool game i have uh prey on my list mm -hmm. we'll be covered that and then i actually have assassin's creed origins on my yeah, list Yeah, i'm sort of surprised it didn't sneak on there it's not quite there no not good enough to make it onto my top 10 list but it's it's managed to put a franchise back on my radar which i completely writ off yeah it's like i'm never going near these games again and I beat every side quest and did a lot of side stuff in Origins. I think my playtime was like 50 hours. Jesus. Which is a significant little RPG. And I think it's a step in the right direction. But, you know, we reviewed it in detail. Uh, needs more work, the franchise, but it's a, it's a good step forward. Yeah. There, the environment yeah. in that game, like, because I've played a lot of it now to do that beauty video. I put probably mm. seven hours. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the environment really is uh, super, super awesome. And that's uh that's it for my honorary mentions. Okay. I I will, I will say mm. about your list, I'm surprised Resident Evil 7 didn't pop up near the bottom. Oh, me too. Me too. Like I I really would have liked to have had Uncharted, Hellblade and Resident Evil on my list, but mm -hmm. um like Resident Evil 7, yeah, I I I w I'm surprised that, you know, going into this like a month ago I was like, man, I don't even know if I'm going to have 10 games, but when it came down to it, I realized that actually I have like 13 and yeah. that I, I would have been very so happy to have way. on my list yeah so resident evil 7 is one that didn't make it i think it's a it, it it's great i love it it's uh i played it through like three and a half times i think uh it was a really fun game to conquer um we we did talk about that in the review mm -hmm. and i really enjoyed getting to a point with that game where nothing about it is spooky it's just like i know all of it and uh it was fun to play through in different ways to get some of the dumb items uh like you get speedy shoes for doing the speed run of it which is under four hours and that was fun and um it was very it was i'm i was so surprised that i liked resident evil 7 because yeah it, it's you know first time through that game is fucking spooky and i don't like spooky yes. games um but i for whatever reason really got into it and really enjoyed it and uh, I, I tried to play it in vr but like i couldn't i remember it. yeah yeah freaked me out yeah, so uh, I think Resident Evil 7 is great, and I hope they... I, I really like the first-person Resident Evil. I hope they do it again. I hope they don't go back to third-person. Yeah. I don't I don't find third-person scary. Like, that I was, think they stick with it. I'm pretty sure they did well. It did, yeah, yeah. Though I've heard that the DLC that's coming out like today or tomorrow is kind of not very good, which is disappointing. Mm. But we'll see. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Yeah, I thought that might creep on. It's... Um, the, the last act of that game isn't very good. 
Um, it just goes on for too long, too much combat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's all of the in-between things, like the puzzles you have to do in-between combat are kind of just a chore, but it's a really fun, really simple um, turn-based strategy game, and it's so charming and adorable. Uh, the third... it's It needs to be played to see the third... Bo- like the end of the third world boss battle because it's, <laughs> you, you got the choir guy yes the uh, the yeah, opera you told singer. me that and that sounds it's, good that game is so bizarre and has such a weird sense of charm and, and cuteness to it that uh it like i'm still amazed that 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 it worked and it actually turned out to be like a really genuinely good game and i i, I think they could make a sequel to it and make it even better uh in a lot like it it's it's a good game uh, and I liked it a lot, and I'll probably go back to it and, and play more of it in the future even, um, but I think a sequel to it could be like really superb. Um, mm-hmm. Even if we don't get a sequel, though, what a strange thing to exist. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then I have to mention it, I have to mention Yakuza 0, even though I only played two hours oh, of yeah. it. Oh, I, I, I don't even know if I'll ever play that game. I might just watch a playthrough of it because playing it's pretty boring but the cutscenes are so good yeah it's so crazy and so well done uh it's got such bizarre humor and style and uh badassery it's it's a fucking crazy game yeah yakuza is a weird thing i've always seen yakuza as kind of like something that you have to experience i beat the third game and i've never really wanted to come back because i feel like i've done it if that makes sense i'm like i've done a yakuza game i get it it was yeah, great yeah i suspect you're probably right but yeah i think that's pretty accurate i don't I, I i i don't know i might be alone on that i know it's a popular series but when i see zero i'm like that's awesome that it's people are buying it it's on ps4 but i have no i'm just not compelled to play it because i've, I've seen the best part about yakuza zero and that's his personality yes yeah and I don't really find kicking people in the face that fun. No, me neither. I just think neither. the game has an awesome spirit to it, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, it's so goofy. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's it. Um, Not a bad year. No. Not a bad year. <laughs> no. Pretty damn solid. Yeah, and uh, well, we tried to make the video short, but um, you know, maybe one year. <laughs> How did it end up this long and we'd already reviewed the games? I don't know. But anyway, oh well. let us know your favorite games of the year yeah, in the I comments below. And may, yeah, maybe let us know what you guys are looking forward to in 2018 because it has the potential to possibly be a good one on the AAA market. There's there's a lot of Sony stuff, Red Dead Redemption 2 on the horizon, so it could be a big one yeah. or it could be a complete massive flop disappointment. Who the bloody hell knows anyway? Yes. Sick of talking. Thank you guys for listening. And we will have another chat probably in February because sure. January's looking a bit quiet. Yeah. But we shall see. Maybe there's some surprise releases in January because all we have is Monster Hunter. And I don't even know if you're going to end up playing that after the beta. <laughs> but I will be. I'm I'll just going to say one depressing thing that I just realized. We spent the whole year doing review roundups with the goal of having a, 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 a digestibly long but not too long review top 10 video and we fucked that up we spent completely we spent a whole year and we fucked it up right at the end (laughs) damn it (sighs) crap oh well i don't know that's the dth way that is but anyway hope you guys enjoyed this year in gaming thank you for listening all the way through and we will see you guys or talk to you guys next year (laughs) bye-bye It probably won't be three hours long like last year because... Yeah, because we reviewed a lot of these games uh, yeah. through, throughout the year. We've been a bit more consistent with our long talky videos. Like the only purpose years. really that the review roundup served. Like it was basically created to reduce <laughs> the length of this video. <laughs> yes, and it should accomplish that hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs>